Can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah, no, we've already worked out all the kinks. It's okay, this is still my meteoric rise to fame starting here, so. It sounds probably terrible. My setup is still extraordinarily scuffed. I have a tripod and stuff coming. I don't have it yet. Probably have to adjust everything. Now you're good, you're good. The graphics are uh, unbeatable. Wait for all of my fans to flock in here. Am I allowed to post this in other places? Okay. Um, I actually just turned it down because I'm seeing it like in the yellow zone of like, I guess like negative 20 dB and I didn't want to start like blowing on anyone's ears. I can turn things back up a little bit. If uh, other people complain. I'm also kind of sitting far away from the mic. Okay, cool. I'll leave it. I'll leave it where it was then. And if other people complain, then uh, they complain. Should I get some non-keyboard people in here? I have friends who are like non-keyboard people. Ordering something, Rabbi. Post this that won't be really thing. Oh, oh, is that the play for uh, desoldering? Yeah, oh, that's that's super smart. So you're doing it all in one match, like you're adding solder to the whole board, and then you're gonna go back over with the vacuum because if so, that sounds way more efficient than anything I would have thought of. Yeah, that's super smart. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I've been to boards that I've really been dreading doing exactly that. Yeah, oh my god, that sounds so much better. I have two boards worth of um, vintage clears that are just sitting there mocking me and I really don't want to do it. And I have a one of the like vintage brown boards from Cindy. I'm also dreading that. <laughs> and like, not that I want to hack up my wise boards, but I have one that I'm maybe gonna sacrifice to the vent gods. So yeah, autonomous. Okay, B so thinks I'm quiet. All right, I'm turning it up. Turning up the gain. No, I don't want to turn up the gain because I'm gonna sound like I'm in like a. I'm turning the volume back up. Hey Pyro, what's up? Oh yeah, you West Coast kids. This is a good time for you. Right, let's see if I can switch scenes without causing total madness. Yeah, look at that. You guys like that? Pro streamer. I should probably tell my roommate I'm streaming so he doesn't think I lost my mind. He's probably asleep, but still. Uh, yeah, Pisa, this is my phone. I just had to download an app to use my phone as a webcam, so now I can stream from my computer. Oh, yeah, Pyro, I'm sorry. I don't have a soothing jazz music this time, because... Okay, good, Pisa. What a... I got um, Epic Cam. It seems like it's been worth the eight bucks so far. Oh, I don't have a... No, no, this, the two cam setup isn't here yet. Yeah, 
think there's a couple of these apps. It kind of bothers me that I have to pay money to unlock functionality that's already in the device that I paid a lot of money for. Um, no knock on the developer of the app, but shame on you, Apple. But uh, this, I'm Lewis Rossman, I am not, so I'll probably keep a lid on that rant until another time. So, we're building a keyboard, yeah, all right. Um, this is gonna be a fun one, so. Oh God, this guy's really out. We got four to three, I don't know, man. I don't know how to, I don't know. I don't know why it's the wrong ratio. In fact, I actually, I don't know. It's probably my $8 app that I shouldn't have paid for. I should have done some of the research. I was just in a hurry. So we're gonna live with four to three today. And I'm gonna to have to try to figure out why 16 to nine is not happening because I don't know. Is there a Twitch app for the iPhone? Yeah, but I'm, I'm streaming through my computer. So I have, I'm using my phone as, um, oh God. <laughs> oh no, what have I done? Um, <laughs> the scuffness of the setup becomes apparent. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So I'm, I wanted to be able to use my computer to actually see what the hell was going on. And more importantly, use the audio interface and the recorder instead of, uh, the iPhone mic. So you can actually hear what's happening in stereo, uh, even though it's going to be reversed <laughs> from what you guys, and I don't know how to reverse the channel, so. Oh, is there a way to do that, actually? I can reverse the channel. Uh, I'm myself like 10 seconds to figure this out. Compressor, expander. Oh, I should, probably should have messed with these, huh? I could have been like a compressor or something, but I'm not going to play with that now. All right. With reverse channels. So if you want to get the real sound, take your left and your right headphones and flip them around. Anyway, it's on to, on to what we're doing here. Um, if there really actually is an issue with the sound, if there's like something that's super loud or super quiet, let me know. Anyway, so we have an ungodly amount of, no, they're not lubed. We are um, shake lubing. I'm calling it shake lubing because it's container agnostic. So you can use a bag or a tub and it doesn't matter. And if you like think the word tub is weird, you can call it Tupperware lube or whatever. It's just shake lubing. You just shake it up. So no, they're not lubed. We're doing that. Uh, and I'm trying to do it. I'm going to try to just run through it quickly before I pass out. Um, so yeah, I have a ridiculous quantity of Greetech Blacks from China. It is a lot of switches. This was supposed to be like 300 some on Greetech Browns, and they sent me Blacks instead. And in the... Um, Taobao, uh, kind of the, the super buy like product listing where they lay them all out and they're like, make sure it's right. I, the lighting was off. There's a lot of glare. And so I was like, yeah, that looks right. That looks like 330 Browns. Then I get 330 blacks. <laughs> so, um, now I have 330 blacks and then I ordered Browns anyway, but we're doing linears today. Cause why not? Um, unfortunately, <laughs> you don't have to imagine. That's real. So, unfortunately, some of them don't feel all that good. Honestly, they don't. Most of them don't feel all that good. And if you really wanted to, like, do a good build, you'd have to cherry pick them. And you're probably going to have, like, a, I don't know, 50% success rate, something like that. Yeah, just like retools. So what's the badness is different. Um, and I'll talk about that once I start opening them up. Um, but, yeah, they're... The badness is different, and I, I don't know if I hate it more or less. So let me actually clear my works. I shouldn't have done that. I have, however, upgraded to a cutting mat. That's how you know I'm a real pro streamer. So, what are we working today? We are working with we got our switches. We got one of these doodads, which I love. We got one of these doodads, which I love. Um, you guys, I'm not going to go on the full rant again, but trust me, you want both of these. We got these bad boys. These bad boys are going in this bad boy. And let's see, we got, uh, 
We got some lube for the stabs. Yeah, the CIY tool is back. <laughs> I gotta get the, uh, I wonder if Way will give me an affiliate link just for that. And every time someone buys one, I make like one cent. That'd be great. I could make like 10 cents. And of course, the rare. Steven Anna, what is that? We had our rare uh, exotic Korean wind keyless bee face bold, whatever you want to call it, case from, I don't know, it's vintage now, and some generic stabilizers that were in there when I got the keyboard. Yeah, cone feet. <laughs> yeah, dude, we're, we're, we're going old school today. We got Gretex. Um, well, I guess we're using 3204 or 3203. Two hundred five G zero. I gotta find my three two hundred three. Sorry if I'm sniffling a little bit. I got over a pretty gnarly cold flu thing recently. So this is this is sort of a new innovation, but we can pretend it's a blend of like one hundred three and two hundred six or something stupid like that. Um, and then we got our Winkyless keyboard. We got our. Uh, Gretex. Yeah, we got the old school uh, Krellbit file too. And of course, Korean Springs. Of course, they're new Korean Springs, but we can pretend they're like Winkila Springs or Rebo or something. Uh, not Rebo. K Mac or something exotic. Anyway, yeah, so we got, a, we got a keyboard build. We got ourselves a keyboard build. Okay. Um, because opening switches takes forever, especially on stream when I'm yammering. I'm not going to spend too long talking about the keyboard, and I actually don't really know too much about its history or anything, so I don't have a whole lot to say. Uh, but I do want to do like a quick tour of it, because I feel like a lot of people know about winkeyless.com, haven't really gotten to experience the keyboards. <laughs> Anesthetic, you stalker. Um, what about caps? Uh, I don't know. I got, I have literally like a pile of caps. I'll probably throw whatever. I don't know. I might even throw nuclear data on there because that's the first set I see when I look over to the left. So <laughs> I don't know. We'll throw whatever. Maybe something equally old school. Like what's a, oh, hyperfuse. We're totally doing hyperfuse. Okay. Uh, so this is going to have hyperfuse on it. Yeah, J Rod, this is, um, I, I'm not even trying to flex. I got this used for like, somewhere between 75 and 100 dollars but i got it shipped from korea um so that cost like 15 20 dollars something like that this was 15 plus shipping these switches are like 15 cents each they're dirt cheap this thing probably costs as much as all the switches combined the lube is you know this is what, ten dollars for a vial whatever it is so no yeah this this honestly the keycaps are going to be about as expensive as everything else on the board put together this is like a super underrated budget way to enter into the hobby, if you don't mind soldering. Um, everybody wants hotspot nowadays, but uh, I remember to actually do things and talk at the same time, instead of just pointing at everything. But yeah, this is, um, let me actually clear my workspace off here, so I'm just get screws everywhere. Don't need these right now. Don't need this yet. Don't need this yet. Whatever, just my junk pile over there. And um, yeah, I'll do an intro of the tools if I'm, as, I, as I put them out. And I do have a tray this time. Really upgraded my setup. I got, a, I got a nice office chair coming. I got a bigger desk coming. I got studio monitors coming one day. Better headphones. We're getting, we're gonna be real content creators one day, kids. You're seeing the start of a whole new thing here. This is the worst part. They don't go anywhere. Or, <laughs> they just get stuck. Okay. Okay. Let's see how it is. All right, so this actually is a uh, fun gotcha with this, with this keyboard. So, yeah, I'm gonna be an e-boy. 
<laughs> so I don't know if you saw something fall out of the back. Um, it's actually a really interesting design, and I kind of see why they don't want to do it anymore, but I also see why they did it. So they've got these little, little like, I don't know what these are called. It's like, um, it's like a, a little, I don't know, it's like a barrel. I guess it's, a, I don't even know if this is a heat set insert. Like this actually might be a heat set insert up there. How do I get the lighting to be not terrible? It's got like, I don't know if, I don't want to hold it up too close to the camera because it's going to be dark. But it's got these like ridges around the edge and then this side's smooth and it's got a flange on one end. And so what it does is it goes in the back here. And you've got these big old holes and it slides, pops in the back like that and it just falls out. But then you've got these nice little countersunk screw holes on top and that screws in and then holds it together. And somehow, I, I don't know, I don't know what these things are called, um, but it's kind of cool, but they're just annoying to unscrew because it seems like you kind of have to hold your finger on the back of it, right? Dude, this is Korean. Like, I feel like anything intelligent in keyboard design was done by Koreans five years ago, but completely in secret and unbeknownst to the West. And uh, the knowledge is quickly becoming lost or just deliberately hidden. So like, you see, I have my finger on the back of it and that's just enough friction to prevent it from like spinning out under me. That plus, I guess, the, the ridges. Um, and, and I guess the tolerances are pretty close if the ridges are actually gonna be meaningful, but I don't know. Yeah, it's like pretty big brain and you don't have to deal with nuts and nuts and stuff like that. Like, yeah, room, I like the more I learn about, you know, OTD keyboards, I'm like, I don't do anything where the acrylic wears out and they aren't a long-term solution. Uh, okay, so this so those ridges are actually preventing them from spinning. Um, and I guess so if you unscrew them too many times, it will wear down the acrylic and then you need something, then you actually need to like use a hex or something like that to prevent it from spinning. That makes sense. Okay, I see. So it so well hopefully I'm extending the life by uh, adding this friction on the back here or they're already worn out and uh, I need, and this is what happens so you need to put your finger on the back of it but either way it's certainly an elegant looking solution uh, you know you, you don't have like a like a big nut in the back of your keyboard or something like that and that one's coming out by itself it's pretty cool I have another one of these cases that um, has like a whole crazy like side foot on it. I don't even know how it's. I don't even know how it's put together. The build. I'll, I'll whip that one out on stream. You guys are gonna die when you see what this build is. I almost feel bad putting this on last um, for doing such a, such a horrible job building this keyboard, but it was. It's. I. It's just. I. I'm not gonna. I don't even remember their Reddit username. So. I think there's they'll probably be spared from the embarrassment and on a personal level and on a spiritual level they know it's all in good fun because we all had our beginner mistakes and how else are you gonna learn other than some guy on Reddit asking for a partial refund for cracking an acrylic plate which you know have to like get measured and remade not get measured but you figure out dimensions and stuff. Okay, so um, this is kind of a like I think I think a lot when a lot of us think WinkyList.com. So for the for the people that just that aren't keyboard people already, I don't know how many of you are left in chat or if you guys tuned out. Uh, let me see who's in here. Oh yeah, J Rod Aesthetic. Okay, yeah. so if you guys aren't keyboard people, there's probably maybe a couple other people that aren't familiar with WinkyList. Um, they are no longer operating outside Korea, um, but they used to do a lot of acrylic. Uh, keyboard cases and they're I think they're best known for these like layered acrylic keyboard cases which I don't know if I, I don't think they invented it I don't know if gone invented it or yeah you have a keyboard good I would hope so <laughs> but anyway so usually you, you see these um, where it's like sheets of layered acrylic um, and the reason they do that is because it's really cheap and easy to laser cut a, a, a 2d sheet this is a little different this is more like uh, I'll show you in a second. So here's your aluminum plate, and they had and they actually went through the trouble of um, countersinking the screw holes. Although it's funny, it's 
it's not a smooth countersink. It's actually like three conical, conical, I guess, counter bores, but it acts like a countersink. So that's another like big brain. I don't know. That's like maybe like a machinist trick or something, but uh, that's pretty smart of them. Probably cuts down on the cost instead of actually, I don't know. Or, or maybe you could have just done like a counter or maybe it's one of those step drill bits, but they just did three steps. I don't know. I assume it was done to cut cost or something like that, but it looks kind of cool. Uh, this is for my first time taking it apart. It's a little bit of dust in the back of the plate. Probably, you know, exotic Korean keyboard dust. I'll put this down for now. Um, and so you can see, like, now there's just this, like, a, in, in like, a, like a Centrac keyboard case or other Winkulus cases you would, you would hear have, like, layer of acrylic in the middle and then you have another acrylic sheet in the bottom this way it's actually just a tray basically this is really a bottom mount keyboard that just lacks the top bezel um or bottom mount or you can call it a sandwich mount i guess even though there's it's an open face sandwich mount keyboard so it's it's like the um i guess like the kbd 67 where uh if, if which is probably the only modern keyboard with that does i guess like the qxp if the qxp didn't have a top bezel or something like that right you could probably actually get an acrylic top piece made if you wanted although there isn't a whole lot of bezel to do that with um this plate just sits there's like a lip uh, it's kind of hard to see but you can see around yeah around here there's like a lip that runs around the edge and that holds the plate in place. And the plate itself sits on this like ledge here. And you can see the, the has a, uh, who was talking about? My, my man, Mark, I don't know if, um, you know what these things are called, but uh, you can see the holes for those things going right through the case. And of course, if I wanted to take off the cone feet, which why would you ever want to take off cone feet? Um, these are actually super cool looking cone feet too. I like these better than the model. Um, you can take them off this way. So yeah, that's the inside of it. And it's kind of cool too. You can see the machining marks. Um, JYMV recently did a review of the E6.5. Uh, go check out his channel on YouTube. Um, cool guy. Good reviewer. A really good, honest reviewer, actually. I really like his content. And he was complaining about the machining marks and the inside of the E6.5. I think they're cool because they're like nice and symmetrical. I don't know if they left them like this on purpose because they look cool or because it was just cheaper to leave it like this. Um, but it's sort of a neat finish. You can even really, actually you do see it through the back. I don't know, it's neat. It gives it some character and texture instead of just a boring frosted acrylic slab. I don't know, I haven't run the underglow through it yet. So we'll see if uh, it, it leads to a kind of a cool effect that way. In fact, I did buy this PCB used, so I trust that it's um, working, but I should probably test it, because that's just good practice. To I'm actually out of USB ports, uh, so I'm going to have to unplug my keyboard for a second. And uh, thread and press inserts. Yeah, are they meant to be like heat set inserts or, or pressed or or um, I don't know, like like, uh, like like mechanically smashed something like that? I feel like I did a name for them once, and I can't uh, remember what it was. Oh, I don't even have Boot Mapper. I, I got to install Boot Mapper, guys. I'm sorry. This is gonna be boring for a second. Oh man. Do I even know how to install Boot Mapper? Oh, I gotta find the URL. If someone has a quick Boot Mapper URL handy, by all means, dump it in chat. Um, I might as well plug my boy JYMV for a second. I don't have a keyboard. Oh. <laughs> all right. Be so. Bless. Bless your heart. Oh man, bless you. Okay, download. No Dropbox, I don't want to open it. I just want to download it. Direct download. Oh my goodness. 
piece of room. MVP. All right, let's copy that bad boy to C program files. And we are on our way. I know we don't need to copy it there, but I want it there anyway. Ah, uh, boot mapper. We need again. All right, changing plugs again. We got LEDs. Device ready. B face is set up and ready to go. Oh, okay. uh, let me see. <sighs> Down. Oh no, which one is it? I can't remember if download is the one that. I'm gonna take the risk. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Nothing is coming up. Do I need to press download? Specify device was not found. Let's try that again. Options. Huh. I mean, this is like the boot map for PCB. They literally wrote the bootmapper software. So this is one PC that I expect to work with bootmapper. Does anyone know why you would get a device not found error with my client? Error of the PS2 AVRGB device. I probably need a driver, don't I? We're gonna put the whole bootmapper thing on hold. And what we're gonna do We're gonna to go to uh, QMK config and just test our keyboard because I don't have a switch hitter either. Because the switch hitter is no longer with us. Uh, and just making sure that works. Okay. I can probably now show you exactly what I'm doing. It's my OBS skills. Yeah, I don't know, man. There's a way to there's a way to do it. Whatever. Anyway, let me just test this really quick. You know, there used to be an OBS setting. I, I had an OBS setting where you could have it split into two windows. And like I could like tell it when to switch. I don't know. I couldn't find the setting. Jira, I can't believe you're still watching this. <laughs> All right, let's see here. There's red, red LEDs on the wall.
Are we back? Bless you all. I can't believe people just watched me do that. I... Guys, it's... You have to go to work tomorrow, and you're watching me do this. I... <laughs> Beyond flattered. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, um... <laughs> So happy I could entertain you guys. Uh, I was test I was testing the PCB. Um, yeah, two PC really spice this up. You know what? All right, I don't know. Uh, so I guess just to recap really quickly for everyone that joined, we're building a rare exotic Korean uh, wind keyless B face bold. I don't know which exact case this is. It's a cool. Um, I mean, yeah, dude, it's a boot mapper PCB. What do you want? Definitely ru ruin a stream. Um, probably, like, sucked all the life out of my CPU or something when I plugged it in. I don't know. Anyway, so this is a uh, aluminum plate, and it sits in, like, a little lip in this machined acrylic tray thing. So it's a bottom mount, open face sandwich mount thing. And uh, we all like plastic. Plastic is good. And I was testing the PCB. I don't know if I want to really try my look um, with Boot Mapper. I figured out the stream remote mode. I figured it out. And uh, well, I was going to show you Boot Mapper, but I guess I'm not that good yet. So we're going to skip that. <laughs> and. Whatever, you know what? It's fine, I'm sure it's fine. If it's broken and I build it and it's broken, that's my fault. Don't do not do this, test your PCB. But uh, yeah, we're just, you know, we're gonna go with it. I also don't have USB ports and I don't know where my USB hub is. It's like somewhere in my massive cleanup project, so whatever. Anyway, this is the uh, wind keyless B-Face PCB. Interestingly, you know, I think some of these actually had the the um, the pins on the bottom. So you had like north facing switches, which a lot of people don't like. This one has south facing switches, which is good. Uh, so we don't have to worry about GMK keycaps hitting on the middle row. Um, it's kind of funny. It has these hand soldered diodes. Like somebody clearly did these by hand. They did a good job, but they did them by hand. Um, I wonder, actually, I'm not even sure. The controller might even be done by hand by someone who's really good. Because um, I know these PCBs, I always went to, I, yeah, right? Um, I remember when I went to buy one of these when I was first getting in the hobby, I was like, oh, $45. It seems, you know, a little more than KBD fans, but it's fine. And then I realized it was not. Is this thing on? Okay, we're back. If that does that more, I'm just gonna cut it because that's infuriating. Um, yeah, no, this is my router. Uh, it's just, uh, I don't know. I really need a new router. I've had a uh, Nighthawk in my Amazon. Okay, 
I just have to get through things quickly because we only have two minute bursts. I really, if that keeps happening, I'll just cut it off because I, um, yeah, no, Biso, I'm trying to uh, use the wired version, but it's just like not detecting it. I had to install some driver, but I have to like, I probably didn't install it right. So I'm having, I have to use it over Wi Fi. Yeah, this would not be an issue if I didn't have to like, this is the stupidest thing. I have to set, my phone is next to my computer. I have to send the data to the router over the air and then back through a wire down the hall into my computer. It's the worst. And um, I'm not going to do this again unless I can figure out how to do it wired because, yeah, I don't want to ever have to mess with this stupid router router again. And I'm definitely buying a new one because this is really ridiculous. Um, anyway, <laughs> when I was first getting into the hobby, I was looking at these PCBs and I realized they were $45 completely unassembled, including all diodes and resistors and stuff, and I didn't know how to do any of that soldering at the time. Um, and they're $70 fully assembled, plus shipping to the USA, so I never bought one. Um, but somebody else either ponied up the 70 bucks or did it themselves, and now I get to benefit from it. So I guess I don't want to do stabs and stuff because that's boring. I want to talk about the switches a little bit, so we're going to start popping switches open. We got our trusty green plastic bowl. Um, I guess we'll do a separate bowl for springs because we're not going to use the stock springs because pretext stock springs. We just don't want to do that. Uh, for anyone who hasn't seen me stream before, I will rave about this tool. I love it. It is a key boss. I don't even know if they're available anymore. I hope they are because everyone should have one. There are many other switch opener tools out there. I like this one because it works with my workflow. Uh, I hate to say like try a bunch of $30 things until you like one, but I really don't know how to recommend it. They are, but they redesigned it. Um, cool, if you have any info on that, I'm sure people here would appreciate knowing about it. Um, the V2, which wasn't that good. Oh man, that's a shame. Um, I, don't, I mean, to me, this is perfect. Like I know there are ones that sit on the table and like they're meant to be used like, where you like stick the switch into it like that. But I like this as like a two-handed dynamic thing because I, you'll watch me do it in a second. Um, I don't know, do I want to count these out? I guess I should count these out, right? This is, I'll just do 70. I'll just do 70 because I don't, I don't want to, uh, so you're counting, counting stuff all the way. I should have counted these out before. I was just so eager to get live and be a entertaining technical catastrophe for all of you. Thanks, Visa, for the link. Uh, I'm not going to have room to make piles of 10. 5, 8, 10. That's 1, 3, 6, 10, 20. Three, six, five, 30, three, six, nine, 40. Okay, so I was wondering, I have, this is um, an enormous bag of Gretech black switches that I got from Taobao by mistake when I was supposed to get browns. Now I have all of them. 10, it's 50, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 60, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and we'll do one more for good measure. I'm not cherry picking these. I'm going to regret that. I'm really going to regret that. But we're having fun. This is like, um, I don't know, man. We're like, this is like Bob Ross keyboards, happy accidents. I mean, seriously, that's how you discover stuff. You try something, it's weird. You try to fix it, maybe it helps, but you had fun doing it. And you learn something along the way. It seems fixed, Chubies, unless my network poops out again. Uh, the local jazz channel is not an option tonight because um, my, uh, I, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, the entertainment's over. <laughs> yeah, the local jazz channel isn't an option tonight. Uh, I guess I could run it. I could, like, stream it on qxr.org. Um, that would take more time. I, I, how about this? How, I highly recommend, if you want some good... Just because I my roommate's asleep, so I'm not gonna like blast music through the house uh, while somebody's trying to sleep because that's just rude. So let's get started. Oh yeah, be so chill in your board. So what that was uh, that was yours. That's so cool. You can drop a link in chat if you want. If you have any uh, information or pictures or something like that, feel free to show off your stuff while we're taking apart some switches. Uh, for anyone that hasn't seen this process before, or hasn't seen this process using this tool, or just hasn't seen me do it, um, well, I guess if, I don't know, is there other like people here that I don't recognize that don't know anything about keyboards? Well, I guess why not, just for posterity. Um, super quick summary version. Uh, these switches are held in with two plastic tabs on each side of the housing. This thing basically wedges under those tabs and pops them open, then you can separate the top and you'll see that in a second. You just snap it in like that and that will separate the two halves of the housing and then you can remove it from the opener, separate the top and bottom halves, put the parts in one bowl, take the spring, put it in another bowl, and you're done. Yes, exactly, Bezo. That's um, that's a really important tip, and that's actually why I like this tool so much. Uh, yeah, so these plastic latches are somewhat delicate. The The plastic material is kind of soft, and if you jam it, I'm going to do it on one because these are cheap switches. If you jam it all the way down, um, on most switch openers, actually, it would damage the plastic. On this one, what I really like about it is that it's really hard to jam it far down enough to actually damage the latches. Um, so even if you're really an animal and you just go at it, you're probably not going to bend the latches too far beyond what they need to bend. But, um, the, the less you bend them, the less wobbly your tops are going to be, which will give a better sound and, uh, potentially less wobble. And yeah, cherry switches especially are susceptible to it. That's absolutely true. Um, so yeah, then you just, uh, what I like about this is you can just pop it down and it like cracks. It doesn't go all the way through. Um, but I, I sort of, my technique is a little different because I'm showing you, I'm trying to like show you how it works. But normally, let me see how I would do this normally. Yeah, I guess I would use that, do my thumb. And you get a feel for how far is too far too. Like you can pop the top back on and it like doesn't really wiggle. That means you did a good job. If you pop the top back on and it's like markedly looser than it was before, then you overdid it. and stop doing that so you don't ruin all your switches um this is actually really especially important with like zilios because these are switches are like 15 cents each zilios are sometimes over a dollar each you really really don't want to make them any worse than you paid for um you should be filming them anyway to be fair i actually don't know if i should practice what i preach and i should film these as well um because they really are probably going to need it although i don't I don't even know if films work with blue tacks, to be fair. It might not even do anything. Because these seem like pretty tight tops. But yeah, listen listen to Beast Around Me. That man's built some keyboards. And um, this is a pretty boring segment, so I'm gonna try to keep up with the banter. Been sitting on 110 holy panels and two files. 3202, do you mean 3203? Or is 3202 something that Krellbit's selling now? 
to put 68 gram springs, but everywhere sold out of 68 gram springs. Um, hmm, that's a tough one. Novel Keys, I think, only makes uh, 56 gram, and then they make like 75 gram or something like that. Um, it makes So Punchy on Taobao used to sell 67.5 gram springs. I'm gonna move this sloppy so it's not so loud for you guys. Um, so it used to sell 67, 3203, yeah, you wrote 3203, I wasn't sure if, um, we're actually using 3203 today. Good stuff. And uh, I guess you don't really wanna buy from that one vendor that we don't wanna buy from. Um, that one spring vendor in Korea. But um, let me see. I, I, I won't be able to find the link, but. Let me see if I can actually find those. And also be in stock. Some, oh, you got some sprit. <laughs> Thank you, Pisa. <laughs> I'm like, a keyboard's over here, and I'm sitting over here. And, you know, some mistakes are forgivable, some are not. Hopefully, that falls into the former category. I don't know, maybe the, maybe this tool isn't the most efficient um, as far as opening switches goes, but it's certainly the one I'm most comfortable with. And I think a lot about keyboards is um, figuring out what you're comfortable with and uh, just using that, especially as far as these tools go for these like, really repetitive tasks. Um, it, you know, if you feel like you're struggling with the equipment, it's just gonna be that much more painful Whereas, um, you know, if you feel like it's flowing, you feel like you're, uh, if it feels comfortable in your hand, you know, then um, then it's, it's just gonna be a more enjoyable process. It's gonna go faster because you can sort of build up an efficient workflow. Like I just sort of ad hoc, based on where I'm positioned, I've, I've cooked up a workflow here where I pop a switch open, I tip it upside down so the spring doesn't fall out. I throw the bottom in, I throw the spring in the trash bin, well, it's not the trash, but it's my like leftovers bin, and I throw the rest of the housing back in the uh, in the bowl. And like, that's not like a technique. That's just what I figured out sitting here in my little cramped space. But um, that's sort of the value of using a tool that feels comfortable in your hand because you can pick it up. You immediately know how it's oriented. You're you get used to using it because you like it and you use it all the time. And then you uh, you know you can move pretty quickly. Considering again in this part, I mean god losing switches can take hours and hours and hours and the end is rewarding Sometimes the process is fun, but other times it's just ugh, it's kind of a drag. So uh, That's why I have you guys to keep me company And I guess just like uh, again, you know in the vein of Bob Ross there I did that one on the table in the vein of Bob Ross I like to say, you know, please feel free to paint along um, if you've got switches to loop or just keyboard chores. If you've got a build coming up this week and you want to open your switches, now is a great time to do it. Or if you want to catch up on your Netflix, the next generation, or, uh, go listen to some uh, users, uh, listener supported public, uh, listener supported radio. You can hit up the radio stations that I linked in chat. You can scroll up and see those. Just, I don't know, enjoy the process, right? Like, keyboards are like, oh yeah, you know, we uh, want to get my build done. You get so e eager to get the build done, but it's just that much more sweet when you work your butt off for it. There's a balance too, you know? That's why I like 60%. Because you can get a build done pretty quick with a TKL or bigger. I mean, sometimes you can take literally twice as long, twice as many, well, not twice as many switches, but. Feels like it takes twice as long. Has anyone else got a uh, good keyboard build coming up? 
feel free to drop the specs in chat. Or if you have any questions about the um, about the build, if you missed anything, if you're curious about these switches, like I said, I haven't cherry picked them. I will probably regret that because these are not terribly consistent, um, and they're different. Their their badness is different from an MX Cherry MX badness, where like a bad Cherry MX will feel like there's sand in it. It doesn't feel like there's sand in it. It feels like it, it, the bad ones feel like the leaf is just too tight against the slider. So you've got, uh, like this one feels really good. It's very smooth. And this one is like, it's still smooth. It's not scratchy. It just feels like there's just not enough clearance inside the housing. And so hopefully with some lube and some break in, that'll kind of not be an issue. But this is what I'd be cherry picking for. If I really wanted to do like a nice Gretek black build, I would have to toss the switch out and Again, I'd probably have like a 50% failure rate if I was trying to be meticulous about it. Lily 58. Lily 58 Pro, is that the hot swap one? Not ye, not ye MK. I don't know how to say your name, I'm sorry. Not, not ye, not ye MK. Um, that's pretty, that's a, that's a really cool layout, actually. I think I have one somewhere. Um, I haven't done a split build in a while but it's definitely, it's a really, really nice layout. It's really handsome. Not yay MK, okay. Yay like Kanye. Posted a photo in Juby's chat. I'd love to see it here as well. I'm curious what uh, what you got going in there. You know, um, uh, there is a, a company called, I don't know if this is the case you're using or not, there's a company called Little Keyboards. Um, and uh, it's a re really nice guy, actually. I met them at Keycon. They had a couple of their keyboards there to demo. Um, they make these sort of they make these sort of, uh, I guess like high-end, low-end cases, for lack of a better word. Like, they're still layered sandwich cases, but they're made with like uh, fancier materials, like you'll get like walnut wood, uh, stainless steel, things like that. And so they're super heavy and like premium feeling. And uh, I think they make a Lily 58 case. I find the link but uh, I can at least drop the store the store link and if you're into these ergo keyboards but you want a more um, robust premium feeling case they're an interesting option for sure and you might look at the price tag and be like wow holy shit but then you think of the cost of like a machined aluminum custom oh you got the Lily 58 from little keyboards yeah I, and I really like the, the amount of thought they put into their product here. Let me, let me make them. They have a huge catalog. It just keeps growing, too. So that's great. I hope you enjoy that. All right, so we're done opening. That was honestly pretty pain, quick and painless. I didn't time it, but uh, it's probably some of my fastest switch opening that I've done in a while. Oh, I should have put the sliders in a separate... Yeah, I'm so dumb. All right, let's get another... Uh, actually, we can do the springs first. Let's do the springs first. Get that out of the way. So these are our stock springs. There's seven empty novel keys bag here. I'm going to dump them in. And I'm trying to be very organized now, so I'm going to seal that up. And we're going to put a label on it. So I don't forget what they are. If I don't mangle the label first. We got a 
a bag of Free Tech Black Stock Springs. Throw them in my switch box or my spring box. A couple of Elite C's, some OLEDs, case, windows for the OLEDs. Are they, oh, are they out of stock of those things or they don't, they don't make, they don't sell all of them? Yeah, that's, that's always the thing of, uh, um, keyboards is that sometimes the one thing you need is in stock and the other thing isn't in stock and you just have to wait and you have to wait. It's, patience is a virtue in this hobby, probably more so than in other places. So talk about these springs really quick. These are, um, these were run as like sort of a group buy and then they were in stock for a while. I don't know if they're still in stock or they're out of stock. Um, these are made by TX Keyboard, as you can see, who uh, is really has historically been mostly a custom keyboard. Uh, first vendor and then designer and manufacturer. And um, now they make springs. And there was like really a dearth in the market most weights are out of stock. Yeah, I guess they re probably restock in batches, right? Um, so yeah, so there was there was really a dearth in the spring market for a while, um, and TX kind of helped step in to fill that. One annoying thing about this box is that they're really hard to open with your. Sorry about the noise, with your hand. So I <laughs> have to stick something in there to pry it open. Otherwise, you end up just totally mangling the box getting it open. And these are funny because there's like a whole plastic tray, which again can be very hard to slide out. So use the tools. Uh, to your advantage. And so these springs are interesting, first of all, because they come in this cool box. Did I use... Oh, this is a fresh box. Good. Okay. Um, and so these springs are interesting because, uh, first of all, because they're not from a certain vendor that we don't like, and they are pretty good. I actually did some experimenting with them uh, to check for consistency, and now my experimenting was very not very high-end. Um, but they seem to be pretty consistent uh, spring to spring, which is important. Um, and they seem to be pretty close to as rated. So I don't know particularly for this, you know, this batch, this box, whether they're rated exactly as, as you know, at 55 grams. But um, I like to believe that for the most part they are. And they come in this cool plastic box. The idea being, and they actually come with like a... a a vial of some kind of generic paraffin lube. Um, I don't actually like it, but uh, I'll, I can talk about that in a second too. So uh, this is sort of a more premium spring buying experience. If you've never bought keyboard springs before, typically you just get them in a plastic bag and they're all like tangled up together. This is definitely a first in the uh, keyboard spring market and remains an only. And it's, it's really neat. Like, it's a clever system that I won't use, but it's clever and I can at least talk about it. You're supposed to, you know, open this bottle and then like, I guess like just drizzle it over the top. I'm not really sure. And there's little holes. I'm not going to flip it over because I'm going to lose all the springs. Um, here I can actually put this back on. There's little holes in the bottom of this thing. And then it gives you this little like plastic drip tray. And so you can catch all the drips and not get your desk covered in oil, but then you also don't get excess lube on the springs. Um, like, it's kind of cool. It's a nice idea. I don't think it's necessary because I'll show you the method I use and it's really quick and easy. Um, I also don't love this spring oil. I have an oil that I like better. I think I just, I like it better because I need to use less of it, basically. Um, so I, I don't really know. I, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to keep accumulating these. I wish they actually, I kind of wish they sold them in bags because I would like, like if I could, this is a pack of springs. I think it's like, over $15 shipped. Usually springs go for about $10 a pack, uh, plus, you know, dirt cheap shipping. So it's, I kind of wish I could pay less and not get all this stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's still cool. It's worth pointing out. Um, I should probably try that method one day, but I don't want to do it now because if it goes weird, it'll take a long time. It's messy. You got this like tray of oil. Uh, Tef from 34 says, I keep forgetting to get one of those kits, but most of the time I'm using dry PTFE lube with oil, which makes that method not for me. Interesting. Dry PTFE lube with oil. Tef from 34, I would love to know more about that method. That's, I don't think I've ever seen somebody doing, using both of those at the same time, especially not on springs. 
I've seen people dry lubing springs. I've seen people using like spray, like bike chain lube. Um, I've seen people dabbing grease on the end of the spring. I've seen people painting the whole spring with grease. I haven't, I don't even know how that would, I mean, are you dissolving the PTFE in the oil? That would be, I would love to uh, get like a five minute summary of that while I t count these out. Um, the one nice thing that's really nice about this tray is that they don't come tangled up. It takes all the crunch away. That's exactly what we're doing. I, these don't really crunch. I mean, theoretically, a good spring is one that's not going to be crunchy, but they all ping and they all crunch to some extent, especially when you put them different housings. You're going to have more of an issue than others. Um, but what, one really nice thing about this packaging is that none of them are tangled up. So again, as you can see, these are you got to untangle them to act as a binder. So you're basically reinventing, you are reinventing um, Crytox grease. That's pretty cool. Changes the feel too. You know, I haven't done a side-by-side -side feel comparison. If it's going to change the feel in my experience, you feel the crunch and sometimes you can feel the crunch and you can feel the ping and especially in Zelios, you can actually feel the spring like resonating inside the housing and it's really annoying. So in that regard, it definitely changes the feel. It's not just a sound thing. It's like you feel these weird, annoying little vibrations. Um, hey, Chubies, if you're heading off, thanks again for the raid. I, uh, yeah, thank you. Have a good rest of the stream. Yeah, thank you. I hope your stream was good as well. And uh, sorry for the technical difficulties, but you're welcome for the entertainment. <laughs> the leaf does that too with the zeal switches, Tefram. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, the leaf ping. Chubies, yeah, I'm thinking about, um, I'm cleaning up my office more. Uh, I'm trying to get a bigger desk. I'm going to get like monitors. I'm trying to get an actual webcam and a tripod and stuff. So I would like to eventually stream once a week. I have a huge backlog of builds and tons of weird switches and vintage stuff and things to desolder. Um, so it would be fun to just stream once a week and like show all that stuff off. But uh, for now, it'll be whenever I have the time. I mean, it's like, you know, 1 a.m. On, on a work night. So it's just sort of making the time when I have it. But um, hey, yeah, thanks for the interest. I'll, uh, you know, post post links when, uh, when I'm up. But uh, yeah, Tefram, I, that's really interesting. I haven't, I don't know. I haven't done the PTFE powder. Um, good night, Chubies. And uh, so I don't... I haven't tried that. I have PTFE powder. I could try that. But uh, yeah, dude, zeal switches, There's. I have a lot of issues. I actually have a... I think it's on YouTube. I have a lot of me doing um, uh, Securios, and I went on a rant <laughs> about the zeal springs. Um, so I think we're of like mind on that. And I will, um, I want to get moving on this, but I would love to, uh, there'll be some more downtime and we'll catch up on, we'll catch up on the spring lube and technique in a second. So what's cool about this packaging is not only do they come, do I have the fine PTFE? I have this stuff that I got off Amazon. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll t put type the specs out in a second, but, uh. Anyway, so yeah, so this stuff is cool because they're not tangled and also you can count them out easily. I think it's like 10 by 11 or something like that. So like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, so I need 70 springs. And uh, so I just need seven rows of this stuff, which makes it super, super easy to count out. Whereas normally I'd have to like untangle the springs, count them, untangle them. It just sucks. And so in case you're curious what I'm doing, 105 GPL Crytox. Okay, yeah, this is very similar. I, should I just, do you just shake some some of the PTFE in here? Should I do that? Because what I'm using for lube, is um, I'm told this is 1000 Centistokes uh, silicone oil. And I got this from a Hong Kong keyboard vendor called Mekki Alpha. They seem to be pretty under the radar. I don't know if they've really done a whole lot recently. Um, I can throw their link up here. Oh, it looks like they're selling. Uh, looks like they're selling Store Uni Crytox now. Cool. 
Good to see them having some some new stuff in stock. Actually, no, that's that's Crytox, Crytox. That's legit. It's right out of the tub. Is this stuff available? Yeah, here we go. So this is the stuff I use for springs. And uh, again, it is, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's apparently silicone uh, silicone oil. And I'm told this is used by uh, Rubik's Cube people. Hey Glacier, how's it going? Um, I'm told this is really, uh, Rubik's Cube people really like it. And uh, I don't know, it's just high viscosity oil. And I guess the high viscosity helps it stick. And you can be really economical with it. That This cost me $5. I'm, I've lubed, I don't know how many hundreds of springs with this by now. And it's like half empty. Yeah, there you go. It's Rubik's Cube oil. And you can actually get this stuff a lot cheaper in a lot bigger quantity off like Amazon or something like that. If you look up like shock oil or something. Uh, but this is more than enough for me and I got so I think I got some switches along along with the order So I got some other keyboard stuff with it So Tefram says what I do is I use a plate and go by eye with a mix ratio You can get the consistency of the thick if you have not enough oil, but if I were to get a creamy color, it's still fluid Okay, I'm gonna not try that now in the interest of time and not making a mess because uh, that stuff that that this this uh, PTFB powder, it's like very full, the container. And when I open it, there's just like Teflon dust everywhere. And so I actually use this with like a mask <laughs> and like open windows and stuff in the kitchen. Um, so I'm not gonna mess with that right now, but I will absolutely try that. That's really interesting. Um, again, pardon my sniffles, I'm still getting over a cold. So I think coating so is consistent. All right, well, this is much more of a low-budget technique than that, but that's really cool. I um, And changing the feel is not something I ever considered, so uh, I will definitely um, give that a look one day. So this, this is my goofy technique for grabbing grabbing the springs. As you So they're kind of hard to get out of here if you were to try to, like, pinch it. Is there more than one mic? No, I'm just in a really live room, Walker. Um, I'm probably going to put up some acoustic paneling in here because my, actually my friend records music, but he's mostly doing it like into it in directly into a four track from like some samples and stuff. So he's not really using the room. Um, and neither am I, but I'm going to put up some acoustic paneling with like some command strips or whatever. And, uh, I got some monitors and stuff. So, or I got mon I've got monitors on the way and a bigger desk and it won't sound like I'm in a cave all the time. <laughs> I'm in the salt rock cave. Fast springiness. Yeah, so, okay. Do you, if anyone has, like, actual engineering experience, uh, please educate me on this. So I'm wondering if it's possible for springs to have, like, a different response time, for lack of a better word. Like, I know once you're sort of in a, once you're in ideal spring territory, I know it's a constant force... Per displacement, right? And force that implies, um, given a constant mass, that implies a constant acceleration. And let's assume my finger, I, I mean, yeah, with the angle of my hand, my finger's changing mass, but let's assume my finger doesn't change mass. So constant force, constant mass implies constant acceleration, I think. Um, so I should have a constant increase in acceleration as a function of how far it's depressed. The question is, is there like some like metallurgical property that would change the response time of a spring, like the the lag time of like non-idealism before you get into ideal spring territory. Yeah, Tefram, no, 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 I would never, I would never want a buttery spring the way you would want a buttery switch. Um, I really like to feel the spring. And Glacier, you are just in time for my spring looping technique, which is exactly yours, uh, except I use a plastic tub instead of a bag. And I've been calling it shake lubing so that it's container agnostic. But that's exactly right. I just take some of that oil, some of the Rubik's Cube oil, I put it in a tub and I shake it up. Um, so I'm sure that's what, similar to yours. And oh yeah, I was just showing off my goofy uh, spring extraction technique is where I put the tweezers in closed and then I let them spring open, and then it holds the spring like that. 
when you're using friction to affect the speed of the spring. Exactly. So hold on. So that means that would be that would be like okay. You're talking about if there's too much like thick grease on the spring or, or oil or whatever, what would happen is when you depress the spring, so I can do this on camera without totally losing all depth perception and keeping it well lit and in focus, it's probably too much to ask for all at once. Um, you're talking about if I depress this, there's so much you know, lube or grease or whatever on the spring that it actually slows that it actually adds a drag force back down, you know, in addition to the force of gravity. And that would um, reduce the force with which it pushes up on, on my finger by, I guess, some constant amount depending on the velocity. So it would, it would be, because um, I have an increasing acceleration, so velocity is going to be like quartic. So that's x to the fourth. Um, so I'm going to have some kind of x to the fourth reduction in velocity of my finger. But I don't know if we perceive velocity or changes in velocity. I, I don't know how humans' fingers perceive um, uh, force. I don't know. This is, We're getting into like biomechanics and stuff. Uh, I didn't go to college for this. My friends all went to college for this. I didn't go to college for this. So if anyone studied any of this stuff, spring metallurgy, uh, biomechanics, sensory, that's five so far, it's 50 so far, stuff, uh, by all means, let me know. Because I'm really, I'm actually really interested in this stuff. Sort of fundamental uh, physics really underlying what we perceive as keyboard typing feel. Okay, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I just want to make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that should be exactly 70 springs. <laughs> oh, yeah, Glacier. Oh, man, you're going to love this. I just did a build with 68. Um, uh, 68 gram, uh, what do you call it? progressive springs from Sprit. And they are weird, very weird. They're like, it feels like, like you, you know when a sponge is wet and it's like, it, there's like no, there's like no give. And then all of a sudden you're just like, whoosh. like, it, I feel like such an, like, you know how audio files talk about like, oh, it's like the, 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 the bass is boomy, but it's like, it's just the bass is higher but it like comes across as boomy somehow there's like something imperceptible that you can't quantify in the curve that's just like sprit springs are a classic example of that i don't know how you can make a spring feel spongy and progressives the more so i so i i put it i put them so that the uh that the the um small the tighter coils were at the top so that so that the the i guess that part compresses first. That's the part at the top. I don't know if there's like a center of gravity thing that would affect that. Um, yeah, I know the, the Sprit had his like fallacious reverse force curve. I wish, that would be so cool. I would I would be into that. There's more weight at the bottom. But see, so th again, theoretical ideal spring, as far as I'm aware, I've heard third hand, is that the less resistant will always compress first. So theoretically, it shouldn't matter which side you have up. But people have tried them both ways, and I think people are like, there's a subtle difference, and I can't quite put my finger on it. I just tried it with the small side on top because that had sort of like a theoretical appeal to me. But I didn't, I don't know. I don't know if that makes a difference, but it's weird. And they're like, Zelio and Cherry Housings, slight pop at the top. Oh, uh, yeah, but you also type in 150 words a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah yeah the top of the key press feels like nothing yeah definitely it's it's like it it, it can actually be weird touch typing if it's too light because then you end up smashing too far down sort of look waiting for that tactile sensation um there was another or some springs that were really interesting in that regard oh man uh 
Oh, the um, not a fan of bottoming out. Yeah, so really interesting. I just got a board recently with um, Cherry MX Speed Silver, not uh, Kale Speed Silver, Cherry MX Speed Silver, and they have a. I, I think first of all, I think the springs are way too stiff. I asked they're the stock springs, but I think they're way stiffer than rated. But they're they're like. They're like everything you would have wanted out of a halo spring. They get heavy like right after you actuate. They're the only springs that I've ever enjoyed that are like heavy at the bottom that I don't bottom out on, but I don't feel like I'm fighting the spring. It's really interesting. I don't like how they sound. They do make black top ones, so they probably sound better. But um, if you're just to kind of want to try something new, get some MX Speed Silvers, lube them up, and use them with the sock springs. Uh, I don't know if my batch is weird, but they're really... I don't know, it was a very different, it was an unexpectedly different experience. You get used to the feeling you can feel when the leaf makes contact. You can feel when the leaf makes contact. Can you? You can. You totally can. Yeah. Wow. Well, I don't know if it's because these springs... Kale speeds. Oh, you got the kale speed linears. Um, I don't have a board with kale speed silver. I have. Um, I typed on the kale speed copper, the tactile ones, and those those are actually really fun. I need to do another build with those. Anyway, I got to get a move on with, uh, with, with spring rub in here. Um, so what I like to do with this stuff is I actually already have just been reusing this this container because um, I did another build the other day. So I'll just. I don't need that much. There's already like a coating of a lube on here. The kale are smoother than the cherry. I believe that. I would definitely believe that. Probably also even more stable with that like wing top. And I just, you know, there's a little bit of this stuff in there. I, just like a couple splurts really because, again, I have a bunch of um, oil already coating it. And then I just cap it off. I used Victorinox oil for the DK Saber build. It was really viscous. Yeah, again, so this stuff is, I don't know, apparently this stuff is low viscosity as far as Rubik's Cube oils go. So I'd be curious to know how um, the Victorinox stuff compares to your uh, whatever, you know, Rubik's Cube oils you might use. Tefram says you got the Kale Speed Silvers that was scratchy. Yeah, also, I guess also not surprising, right? They haven't really been known to be super consistent. I'm gonna lower the volume so I don't shake your brains out. Um, so you probably couldn't, maybe you could hear it with the lower volume, but there's a point at which you, actually the sound changes as like they get nicely coated in, in lube. And that's sort of how you know they're getting close to done. Um, and then they all start kind of uh, tangling up on themselves. So you don't want to go long, any longer than you need to because you're just gonna have more untangling work to do. And so you can see there's a nice, they're all, you know, they're shinier, they're wet looking, and they stick with all that nice viscous oil. Mm, viscosity and that's all we had to do so I'm gonna pack the box back up real quick I remember this girlfriend probably like awake in bed listening to me just banter to like three people online about springs I'm really cool I promise all right, so we're gonna put this aside for now. Let's just put that be as is. Actually, I might need it's comparable to the thickest Rubik's Cube loop. The Victorinox is comparable to the thickest Rubik's Cube loop. Okay, so I was told by somebody on Discord that the 1000 Centistokes uh, silicone oil is actually thin. For Rubik's Cube Lube. So I would be very curious what you use for the thick stuff. I'm also curious, is, it a, is a Rubik's Cube like an MX switch or like a key switch where like some people like them buttery and some people like them um, 
you know, glidey or whatever. Just try the gun oil as well. Yeah, so the one thing, and I actually heard that I'm not supposed to use Victorinox in switches because it has a mineral oil base, which can degrade the plastic over time. I don't know if that's true. I mean, you used it in a DK Saver build of all things, so I want to trust you that it's safe. Um, but any kind of gun oil, you know, you want to make sure that it's safe for nylon and uh, palm and other things. So I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. I, so much conflicting information, man. I don't know. We need Ripster back. So I think I might have made a slight miscalculation in that I don't have another... Korean people like to use Victorinox. In that case, you have to use it in the saver. Give me one second. I'm going to um, leave for one second and try to find another container. Otherwise, I'm going to... Actually, you know what? In the interest of everybody's time, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the springs. We're going to dump them out. Use my uh, tweezers for this. And I'm going to get a paper towel and I'm going to wipe this down. Please hold. All right, we're back. So, probably paper towels, probably not the best thing, because um, lint or dust or whatever. But I'm using it anyway. I don't know. Fuck springs, man. <laughs> Right? Never, I never thought, when I joined the keyboard hobby, mechanical keyboard, like I knew I was getting into springs because that was like a thing, but like I didn't, like the amount of mental energy I devoted to thinking about springs <laughs> in the last year of my life, just completely ridiculous. So, all right, we got our spring of things. I'm just going to throw that over here for now. Now, here's another uh, grave miscalculation is I left all the... Oh, here at Glacier, I actually need your spiritual um, input on this. Should I film these? I was actually thinking of skipping it, partly because I'm lazy, but partly because I feel like the tops are pretty tight. Um, so they're Gritec Blacks. I have not cherry-picked them. Gritec. So who knows, man. Uh, sound stuff and vibrations. Tephram, I... If you... Man, I was asking around about vibrations uh, for a while, and I kind of put it on hold. Um, but I actually have a of a long term plan to get some some of those like contact microphones and like stick them in different parts of like piezoelectric uh, vibration microphones and stick them in different parts of a keyboard and like try with different plate materials and tactiles and linears and stuff because I. I am so obsessed with like figuring out, I, I don't know, I don't have any education in this stuff at all, but I'm really interested in figuring out, I, I, I'm, a, I'm convinced that the top out, for example, like the, the, um, like, like, I'll talk about this later. I'm going to get a move on. I have to separate the sliders. I should have separated them when I was doing it, but I was just trying to, no, I didn't have enough room for the bowls, so. 
but yeah, I, there's like there's so much more that I think that we haven't explored as a community from a scientific perspective and like an engineering perspective, and like people have hinted at it with like the relief cuts and different plate materials and, and case materials and stuff. But there's like, I think there's like another layer. We can go deeper. We can like one layer, one layer beyond. I think we can get there. Oh man, this is cool. Honestly, same. I would love to actually study the mechanics of how different plate materials and switches and cases sound and why they feel or sound a certain way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it definitely is more than just like the Young's modulus of whatever metal. You know? 99% word of mouth. Yeah. Or something they learned in like their engineering, you know, 101 class, which is more than I know. But uh, it's there's sometimes what you learn in the one on one class. Although to be fair, it's stainless steel sounds a lot worse than brass and does look a lot less cool. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. For feel wise, it's the same. They want to be able to get specific leafs. So many have yeah, but unfortunately. Um, Swapping leafs, if you ever tried it. I tried like one leaf and it was super dicey and I probably bent it. And um, Zeal in particular is adamant about the fact that leafs are very, very sensitive and that uh, you can easily ruin them by messing with them too much. So um, I'll take Zeal at his word. The man has probably done more research into switch design than many people combined ever will dream of ever doing so i'm willing to take him at his word on that one then again his spring's still pink like crazy so that sounds better heat adding heat that's a good idea glacier I think that's true. I think most of the, the, the switches that I've filmed are switches that I've used unfilmed or I spent like hours sitting there filming them and not filming them and lubing them with three different lubes and using 10 different springs. Um, and just in the interest of my time and sanity, I haven't done that so much. I'm more just kind of throwing parts together and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work so well. Um, or, you know, it's never bad, but it's never like really maybe not something I have in mind. It's not my style, but so I think I'm gonna not film. I'll go with your method. I've never, I've, I mean, again, they're not cherry picked. I'm actually swapping all the parts now. She sold it at 27 for the alphas and film those. Huh. Yeah, so you'll film part of it, and then yeah, you don't need to film the mods, I guess. Um, then again, filming is quick but my films are in the other room. So it's been decided for me. I, the film evangelist, am not going to film. Believe it. Seen it here first. That's most of them. So these don't, so actually I might as well talk about these switches. They don't seem to be um, they don't seem to be factory lubed at all. The sliders are completely dry. The sliders are completely dry and the leaves are completely dry. Which is a bold move considering how cheap they are and how clearly not smooth they are. But actually considering the fact that they're not factory lubed at all, Cherry is factory lubed, Gateron is aggressively factory lubed nowadays. Uh, Kale I think is factory, is, has like apparently has like a factory dry lube. Um, this is actually, I'm actually impressed with how smooth these are considering they're completely, no, oh no, this maybe has the faintest suggestion of a dot of lube. Okay, no, these have been factory lubed. It's something very, very thick in a very tiny inconsistent dot on the leaf. This one barely, it's like, it's like, this is like, um, 
this is like uh I mean, it's it's like you, you had like a stick and you dipped it in the lube and then you dried it off and then you like tapped the leaf with it. It's like the faintest kiss of lube, um, which would exp maybe is enough to explain why some of them feel really, really like frictiony and some of them don't, um, which would make total sense that I'm only feeling leaf friction and the housings and these sliders are actually very, very smooth. These sliders in my fingers feel like Gateron sliders. They're very slick. And that's probably one of the biggest things you'll notice about Gateron versus Cherry is actually the sliders. You can feel the difference in your hand. The Gateron ones are like shiny and super, super slick feeling. And these are these feel like Gateron sliders to me. I think that's everything. Yeah, good enough. If I need more. Hang on, I think I have some films here. Ah, I have some films here. Okay. Green text for Koreans, Gatarons, cheap, smooth. Um, well, they're not, but maybe they are, you know? Maybe Gat because Gateron does factory loop. It's just really hard to say. We're going to film one. We're just going to film one. Um, again, for anyone still watching, uh, I got these in like some kind of bulk Taobao listing, uh, Tefram. Uh, if you DM me on Discord, um, DM me on Discord and remind me, and I will, um, I'll find the link for you. It's, uh, they're like 15 cents each, but the minimum order quantity is like 100 or something. I don't remember. Maybe it's like 200. <laughs> anyway, so I don't know if anyone's still watching who's like not a total keyboard expert, um, for if anyone's still watching it all other than YouTube, but uh, this is a Switch film. These are actually also made by TX Keyboards. I think they invented these, actually. I don't know who the inventor was, but TX Keyboards is the only place I've ever seen selling them. And they're little thin sheets of polycarbonate. And uh, it, it just is made, it's cut to fit in this, in this like ledge of the switch. And the idea is that it fills up any extra space, I guess, between the top and the bottom housing, and that helps <sighs> Because of the way these clips work, basically, it helps the top grip tighter, which should prevent any um, wobbling around, which should uh, eliminate any rattly noises and also should theoretically reduce the wobble of the switch overall. So it should should lead to a um, more stable typing feel and a, it can, and a significantly improved sound in some cases. So let's just throw one together, unlubed, which we know the sound of an unlubed switch is just not always going to be that good. But let's just throw one together and see if we can hear the difference and or feel the difference between. And again, I'm, I swapped all the parts around now. So I don't know if my cherry, if it's going to be even worse or maybe it's going to sort of average out to, to feel better average per switch. I don't know. You know, swapping parts on switches is always kind of like a dicey proposition. So let's let's grab one that I haven't even opened yet. Let's get our plate. In fact, you know, let me finish. Let me finish scooping these. Back into their bowl. So we got an unfilmed one. Did I just scoop the filmed one into the bowl? I'm losing my mind. I think I actually just scooped the filmed one back. What is wrong with me? <laughs> I don't know what it did with it. <laughs> Thanks, Tefran. I will, uh, 
don't know, maybe one day I'll have a Discord server or I'll post a review with them or something. All right, I guess I'm just gonna open another one because I don't know what I did with that. <laughs> oh, that had a spring in it too. Damn. All right, well, hopefully I only need 69 of these. Yeah, dude, Glacier. I had to I had to hunt for one. I really had to hunt for one. On um Actually, this is even better. I have a stock spring. I had to hunt for one on uh I got this off a user on the Top Clack Discord actually, but uh I I actually I actually have 3 of them now. I have one of the acrylic trays. And he switches to try them all out. That's the way to do it. Just Keep an eye on the bank account because you're like, oh, it's only 50 cents a switch. It's only 20 cents a switch and then I pay shipping and then it stacks up really fast, especially then you want to get more to build with. Which one is the EX2? Is that this one? The, like, I don't know which ones are which. There's like the BBB and there's the bold and there's this one. Um, like this one is an acrylic tray with the lip. There's, an, I have another one that's like more of a traditional sandwich and I have another one, um, I should probably build all three of them and do like the parade of B-Face cases. I don't know anything about the ones I own. So um, anything you know about them would be cool. Any history at all? Because, you know, I could, I could email WinKeyList. They've responded to my emails in the past. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what, I don't even know what's on their site right now. I have to like go to their Korean site. But uh, let me get some keycaps. Get some test keycaps for this. These are uh, CRP PBT die subs. Now, all the usual caveats apply. You know, there's it's going to sound very different when there's. It's just going to sound very different when it's fully built. But um, let's see if we can hear the difference. For if I can feel the difference. Yeah, yeah, totally unlubed. Oh yeah, sure. Do it without bottoming out. Interesting. So this one here is with the film. This one's without. So sort of in typical film fashion, the film seems to make it a little louder, a little higher pitched and a little crisper. I'm gonna go with unfilmed. These don't need it. Like there's so little difference Oh, all right. There's like a negligible difference in wobble. Okay, you can see, you can see, it's hard to see on this camera, but it's my hands moving. You're not gonna be able to see it, but yeah, so 
That's what's weird, is normally that changes the sound significantly and it improves the feel significantly. In this case, the, the difference in feel is minimal. It's really, it's there. It's a little less wobbly, but it's not like, the stickers don't make a difference camp for so long. To be fair, I have not gotten, ever gotten good results out of stickers, but I also haven't tried in a really long time. I was actually tempted, really tempted to do stickers for this build just to do the full like vintage Korean thing, but um, they're so much harder to install. I didn't want to do it late at night. Um, if anyone has any good field reports of stickers instead of films, let me know. So, all right, I, all right, I'll, I'll film, I'll do films, I'll do films, because why not? This is unlubed for the film. I'll just throw it back in the bag. This one, well, we have 69 springs now. All right, it's the weed number. We'll go with 69 and find any more sliders, any more, any more switches, any more switches. Um... What next? Lubing the sliders. So, this is like total sacrilege. Krelbit would have a heart. Actually, he probably doesn't care. Let's be real. But um, this works. I was shocked when I first saw this technique. Uh, the creamy. Oh, yeah, Tefram. I have a build with the creamy switches. Um, they're basically unusable if you don't. But if you film them, they're like. I don't know, kind of just, they're good. They're pretty good <laughs> with the films. Um, I 100% agree on that, but I'm not gonna do it for this build. Did I say I'm not? I'm not, I'm, I'm just, one less thing to do. So, we're going to shake lube with 3203. This stuff actually works really well, shaking. Um, it's You think it's decreased, it's not gonna spread. It, uh, I've done it with 3204, but 3203, it works beautifully. Watch this. So I'm probably gonna use too much, but just kind of smear it around the inside. Should probably stir this up. I didn't stir it up. Oh well. I might have to add a little extra oil actually if I just uh, maybe threw off all the ratios. Hopefully I didn't turn this into like a gluey mess. Yeah, so I, I think I originally, the first person I saw do this was I am me, you are you. And uh, I was, I my mind was completely blown by it. it. It was like, wow, you just saved me hours of time. And I'm going to go with a little too let, a little too little to start, just to just to make sure I have the have the coating right. And I don't want to overdo it. Tell looping 3204 on MX Browns might be a little uh, aggressive. Um, I would do it with 104 or 3203. But uh, they might just feel like linears. <laughs> just fair warning. <laughs> um, that's probably not enough grease. That's de almost definitely not enough grease. I just want to see how it coats. That's the point. Actual glacier, you are you are a madman. You shake lubed with 105, you're actually nuts. Oh, on browns. I did um, 105 on the sides of my of my uh, it punchy pinks. They feel amazing. Um, oh man, I actually have a whole, um, I have a whole video on uh, lubing with 105 and I actually did it with punchy pinks. Um, and I'm sorry that you over lubed the hell out of them because uh, it's, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna show my own video. All right, I'm gonna show my own video. Not that, not that I need to like educate actual Glacier himself on uh, lubing switches, but um, if you're ever up for the challenge again, I would, uh, I have a technique that seems to work and it feels pretty good. 
The Crystal Loop 111, yes, Tefram. I have a, the Crystal 111, I have a build with 35 gram springs from KBD fans and pre retool MX Browns. Um, that is a ridiculous build. <laughs> I actually have a typing video of that. Let me see if I can find that. Oh boy. That's the uh, typing video for the 35 gram Browns. Tefram, I will take issue with you on that. I will disagree. But um, I'm sure that yours is based on your experience and my disagreement will be based on my experience. And so I don't know that there's, I would encourage you to consider the, um, the corners, specifically, I don't really need much more than that actually. This stuff spreads pretty good. Specifically, the back, like, yeah, I've seen the marks. Um, and I don't think that tells the whole story. Uh, and I noticed this especially when I was using, like, GPL um, 205 grade zero. On the top, not on the stem. Oh, interesting. I would have to see what you do then. I feel like I can't picture what you're doing. But um, one thing I noticed is that um, when I was doing a build with 205 grade zero, I noticed that unless I got the top housing, oh yeah, I don't, I don't mess with the top housings anymore. I never, I never lose the top housings anymore. Um, way too lazy for that. The, the actual, like the back edge corners and getting in like the little crevices around the rail, that turned out to be super important. Yeah, the lube in the lower housing is like 50-50 for me. Um, I feel like it didn't make a difference at all in my 129 build, but maybe it did. I didn't really even test it. Like I've stopped experimenting with builds and I just kind of go with whatever my instinct tells me to go with. So I don't know. I, I feel like I should probably start doing more experimenting. I, I got to make more content. You know, I got to make like videos and like edited videos. It's just so much work. I don't really have any video editing experience at all. I'll do one more shaking session. Filling the contact more, adding more friction, thus more resistance. Yeah, yeah. Um, again, in my experience, I think people describe that as buttery feeling. And I like a little bit of it. And again, you know, if anyone's watching this and watching a VOD or, um, you know, wants to know how I like my switches, this is a... That's actually not evenly... That's not a good... Some more it's an even coating, but it hasn't gotten in all. It hasn't worked itself into the crevices yet, so I'm going to do a little more. It's probably wasteful of lube, honestly. I'm just so lazy. This saves me like an hour and a half of work. Takes away the crispness. I can see that. Yeah, you know, I don't feel like I get any sluggishness on the return with this method. But again, you know, that's what's cool about keyboards is um, what you feel. You know, if you feel like even a little bit of lube in the wrong place adds sluggishness on the return, you know, if you're new to the hobby or something, that's the kind of stuff that you need to experiment with and test out. Yeah, I'd love to know. Uh, I'd love to see like pictures of what your method is because I feel like I, if you only do it on the top housing, that's so interesting. I, I'd love to see what that is. So what I was looking for when I sort of peered into the abyss, and um, in fact, I don't even like how this is coded now still, but I might, I'm just gonna go with it because I've, I've committed. I don't wanna brush, rebrush all of them. So <clears throat> what, I, what I'm seeing is absent is, uh, oh, you're not gonna be able to see that. So it's nice and shiny. There's like the crevice between the rail here and like the body of the switch 
there's like a little bit of a bear patch um, in that like crevice there. And I don't think it matters that much, if at all. But uh, that is one downside to this method when you're using a grease is that it won't necessarily get into all of the little tiny corners that maybe an oil would. Um, but again, people have used it with 3204, and it's, they still like it. They still think it's acceptably smooth. So it's possible that as far as contact points go, those areas are really not important. That's good enough for me. I'm going to go with it. I can't remember if we decided we're doing films or not. If you take air space, creates a suction. Ah, yes. That is one reason why I... Don't lube down in, in uh, the post in the bottom. Only the areas that matter when you press really off center. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just feeling you don't like the suction feeling. Yeah, oh, I hate that. Uh, if I feel that in my switch at all, I've, I've considered that horrendously over lubed. Um, not doing films, it's late night. I'm doing this quick. One thing is um, people who type fast, off-center. Yeah, 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 I, I get that. Um, you type about 50 words a minute faster than I do. I type maybe you know 90 to 100 on a, on a regular basis. Um, on the upper row especially, yeah. And so you know maybe I won't like this, and I'll take it apart and need to brush lube them. This will be educational for me. Um, so just, I use tweezers for the uh, grease, the oiled springs, because this stuff actually irritates my fingers a little bit, and I don't like the, uh, so he's 170, yeah, right, you're past 150, it's pedestrian now. Stick that guy on there, and that's our first piece of hair in there. First switch done. Now, I am weird. I feel like it didn't do anything at all. I feel like it just slowed it down. <laughs> Def from you would hate this. I feel like it added butteriness without making it any smoother. <laughs> oh man, this is kind of a scuffed feeling build. <laughs> yeah, that's totally what it did. It's buttery and not any smoother. Hopefully this breaks in well. Oh boy. Oh man. This is what I stayed up late for. Jesus. All right. Get this, I'll get this out of my life as quickly as possible. <laughs> sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. brings you back to earth yeah fair enough so before I go too far I probably actually should do stabilizers because these were like the original the like the original um vintage Korean lube that's probably long worn off by now get a little ahead of myself with this here stabilizer super quick addition snap-ins hell yeah Tefram is uh, English not your first language. Teflon tape on my stabs instead of lube. No, I have not tried that. I, I think I have some of that stuff, but not uh, handy. Not anywhere I can easily um, get to it. So some of these are like God, that's like crusty. This looks like super lube from like the dark ages. That makes sense, Glacier. I think that's, I mean, we were taught to touch type in school. Um, we had like a computer class. Slash so second learning disabilities, mostly memory stuff. Okay, fair enough. That, yeah, that that has. I mean, that's stereotypically where like you read the word on a page and um, 
like the letters look scrambled. I don't know how if that actually is how it manifests in real life. But uh, yeah, that definitely, definitely would slow down the process, I'm sure. So these are not clipped, so I have to clip these real quick. Too much on that one. Stab in half, yeah. <laughs> Clip the whole stab in half. Probably could. These slush cutters are amazing. These are like cheapos from Amazon, or I don't know, maybe I got them for free. Even I, have, I don't know where they came from. Maybe it's dad's toolbox. Who knows? They'll cut through anything. Anything plastic, anyway. Most wire. Glacier, I'm just doing stabs, so I'm bad. I'm honestly not that good at stabs. I feel like maybe in like one third of my builds, the stabs start going uh, going rattly after a little while. So I'm not to be taken seriously when it comes to stabilizers. But uh, you know, so it goes, I guess. I'm also not that sensitive to annoying sounding stabs. I I don't like it if it's like totally unmoved. But as long as you've made an attempt. I feel like it's fine. I have one keyboard that I just built recently and the stab's like clicking consistently every time I press the space bar and that's annoying. So I'm gonna have to rebuild that one or at least try to like inject some lube in there with a toothpick or something, but um, I'm not gonna do a lesson on stabs right now. For anybody watching who's new and is trying to get some educational content, I'm sorry I'm skipping stabs today. Uh, Teja types and J keyboards and everybody else has covered stabs a million times. I will try to cover it in future or flashback to IP. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will cover stabs when I have when I'm not doing this very late at night my time. So you see my technique? <laughs> I just I just get my like tuba snot here and I uh, just dip it in. And I like to get a little extra snot on the end. Because it, it, it gets a, uh, it gets uh, smashed up when you insert into the housing. That's good enough for me. It's probably all gets pushed out. Gets useless anyway. I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't experimented with stab methods. It's just so tedious to do more than a few of these. One day I will perfect my stab technique. Today is not today. Okay. I will, however, check. They're not totally bad.
tight PCB mount holes. It might be interesting when I'm building. Fix that. You can hear how swishy, you know, swishy that switches. That's after it's been looped. <laughs> you can actually feel the swooshing too. It's really. Oh god, this build is gonna drive me crazy. This build would, would probably send Ip and IP into a mental institution. He would. Yeah. That's the leaf. That's the leaf against the slider. Oh man, that's that's annoying. That's really annoying. But stab sounds fine. Uh, this, this is this is a throwaway build for sure. Heffram, you said you don't use stabs. You only got ergo ortho things? That's gonna go rattly on me in a couple days. I can feel it. And I'm gonna leave it. This build is not long for the world anyway. Long for this world. I'm just gonna leave it. Madman, keep going. Yeah, Tefram, I've got a whole collection of one use and ergos and stuff that I like plan to build and then I kind of like never did. In the meantime, I just got into like boring old 60%, 75%, etc. Um, but I'm always curious to know what people's layouts are. You know, function layers, macros, things like that. That was always my big hang up as I was too lazy to do any of that stuff. To like figure out, you know, spend forever. Um, wait, what? That's a six. Six point two five. Okay. I gotta remember to that I'm not really on camera. I keep doing things like way over on this end, and it's like hard to. Uh, I hope you guys to see. Please don't be rattly. 
Please don't be warped. Oh. oh, that's bottom out. The wall on the right side, not so good. Yeah, that's not good. But do I have the will to change it? You know what, that won't bother me. I'll be fine with it. I can live with that. Probably the space bars may be slightly warped too. Good enough. Good enough for the girls I go out with. As AVE might say. Great expression. Maybe it's sexist, I don't know. All right, home stretch, reassembly. Use Colmac. Colmac, Ergo, Ortho, 1U. See, that's my problem with that kind of thing is I don't have room in my brain for uh, all that stuff. Like I, my job requires, you know, technical knowledge. Um, I'm thinking hard all day. I don't want to have to like think hard to learn my own keyboard, you know, especially because it's my main tool at work. And I know that if I put in the effort, I'm going to be rewarded exactly. If I if I accept the fact that I'm going to type really slow for a while, I know I'll get used to it. The problem is that I sort of have this tendency to over-optimize things like that where like it's frustrating and it's frustrating and it's frustrating. It's like, well, I want to make it better and I want to make it better and I spend all this time tweaking it and then I'm at work, you know, uh, tweaking my layout honestly for me it's not easy to remember I've, I've made so many layouts I've forgotten more layouts than many people have learned and um, for, for me I really would have to like write out a cheat sheet and make and like really own that layout and that would be my layout and I use it all the time um, and then you know maybe if I've got this 40% or that 40% I would have to right, yeah. I'm sure if I, you know, learn more layouts, or anyway, I haven't, I haven't put the mental effort into it, um, but I know I, it's going to be rewarding, and that's, uh, I guess it sucks that we can't go back to a normal keyboard now, <laughs> but um, I'm glad you found something that works for you, especially because you've got, you know, whatever uh, obstacles you might have to uh, everybody else's system working for you. You do have cheat sheets, okay. Yeah, I, I'm really interested in your, um, in your setup. Do you, uh, I assume you, you know, type as part of maybe your job, you go to school, um, like to try new options. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. I, I'd love to um, talk more about that because I'm, um, Definitely interested in ergonomics. I don't really have any significant limitations using the standard layout. Thank you for getting to do things on camera. Um, but I definitely feel like it's suboptimal, and that's frustrating. Um, I mean, my first keyboard was an Ergodox, so it's weird. I feel like I've gone backwards um, from the Ergodox, which that hurt my thumbs. I, I couldn't use it. It actually gave me some kind of RSI in my thumbs Got back to school for a few years. Yeah. Sometimes it's like that. All right. Maybe I did one too many of these. I like to put a few switches in the plate first, just so um, it's nice and. Oh, is that one bent? That's why. So everything's sort of nice and aligned and. Um, held up off the plate, I guess. I don't like when it's like, when the plate's flopping around. But I think I put one too many in. And these are, I think these are tight. These are fairly tight um, PCB mount holes. 
Oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna have to take these out. Do them one at a time. Huh. Hope this isn't gonna be a struggle. The plate's not too tight, that's nice. Or maybe these switches don't grip very tight. and fingers yeah I I will say that I cannot go back to a um, like a regular rubber dome keyboard it actually hurts my wrists just to just to use it for a little while um, and I, I don't, I'm, I'm like I'm not even being an elitist it actually just it reminds me why I got into the hobby because I was actually I was actually in pain at work every day and that sucked that really sucked So you've done the right thing. You invested in your tools, made it work for you. It's really good to hear. Okay, so I don't know, again, you know, for people that don't build keyboards very often, which I assume none of you, none of the, the non-keyboard builders are really left here, but um, what I was doing was, uh, when, I mean, there's no, there's nothing holding up the plate off the PCB, right? The only thing holding it up is the switches, and there's these little clips that, that clip into the plate. And so, what I was doing was I was um, getting the first few switches in to make sure that the uh, the plate and the PCB are sitting, everything's just sitting nice, that the switches are correctly seated in the PCB because there's these little mounting holes, and it's actually quite a tight fit in this one. So I just wanted to make sure everything's sitting sitting correctly before I just go ahead and start smashing them in. I can't wait to get the bigger desk. Now, here we go. Now we can get moving. We can get cruising. Oh, yeah. It's one of those builds. Oh, boy. Really got to make sure that the uh, switch is seated correctly because... Otherwise, it's just, again, it's one of those things that probably doesn't really matter in the long run, but it'll really bother me if any of the switches are not perfectly aligned, um, not perfectly flush sitting on top of the PCB, flush with the plate, etc. Partly aesthetics and partly it it looks really bad when the switch is misaligned and like the keycap is visibly misaligned because of it. And it also feels bad to type on if it's like really badly misaligned, it'll actually just that pressing that key will just you'll hate it every time. That will get easier as more and more switches are in the plate and there's more support for the plate and the plate's less likely to just fall down on you when you press down on it, but still annoying. I'm avoiding the I'm avoiding the ones with gaps. Paste on the last in Discord. Um, yeah, I'll have to I'll have to look at it after. So one thing I'm doing is I'm avoiding putting switches in like the big gappy holes. 
until the end because those don't really do anything. Um, those don't really do anything as far as holding up the plate. So they're not useful to have installed early on and they can just be, they're just floating in the breeze there. You don't really want to do that. It just makes your life harder. You know, you could always work with it, but just why? Why make life harder than it needs to be? So I've switched to um, running them down the middle now because now there's plenty of support on the edges and now I'm filling in the middle. So again, I don't want the plate to be bending under my fingers because then again, it just, it can pop off the, um, the clips and then you gotta pull the plate back up to reseat the plate and the clips and it just makes more work for yourself. So you could just make your life easier by putting, installing the switches in the right, just in, a, in an order that is conducive to uh, supporting the plate until everything's fully installed. Yeah, it's already getting easier to press them in because I don't have to worry about the plate falling down anymore. And notice that I'm doing all the untangled springs first. I'm cherry picking those because again, it's just easier if I don't have to worry about untangling springs until I absolutely have to. Just one less thing to think about at a time. Sort of little like efficiency things that you sort of pick up if you build a lot of keyboards. I'm not being very efficient. I'm, I will not claim to be a very efficient keyboard builder, especially given my use of space. I'm efficient in spite of myself, not because of myself. So the right hand on my mouse most of the time. I have all my navigation keys on my left side. Yep, that makes sense. So you can do uh, mouse and nav at the same time, same hand. That's probably the one uh, big drawback of the HHKB layout. Um, it's not only is your nav on a layer, but it's also uh, right hand, so you can't easily mouse and nav really at all with the standard HHKB layout. Typing characters, put the main one used on the home row. Yeah, which, which I think is the principle behind several different of the alternate um, alternate layouts with Colmac. There's Workman, right? Uh, many, many other variants that I'm not really familiar with, but I know they're out there. And you apparently you've settled on Colmac, which uh, you know whatever works for you, right? There's Dvorak, which I think puts all the vowels on the home row. Um, but people like it less because I think it has less in common with QWERTY, it seems to be the main complaint about it, and probably some other stuff. I know people talk about same hand rolls and extension versus flexion is the whole big workman thing. And I've, I've read of that a million times, but I can't say I've spent any quality time with any of these layouts personally. Talk to somebody like Tefram here, I'm sure they have. Um, And yeah, so you know, I'm again, I can't say I'm the most efficient keyboard builder, but it definitely helps to have your workspace laid out in a way that, uh, I don't know, is conducive to being economical with your movement. Again, not that I'm, I'm just flailing my arms all over the desk here, but um. It's certainly better than if I, you know, the bowl's in a logical order, you know, I know, I know where things are. It's sort of nice when you can turn your brain off and do it, you know, trust that you're not going to be making a ton of mistakes. Because again, you know, when you got to go back and fix something in a keyboard build, it's kind of really demoralizing. Like, I didn't want to go back and fix the stabs, even though they weren't perfect. They were like good enough for me. 
Um, you know, and if this was like a you know a really high end keyboard or something, I would uh, definitely go back and fix it. That's something I'm going to use every day. But this is kind of more of a fun build, I guess. Um, I already decided I don't like the switches, so. But I don't hate them, you know. I just don't like them that much. I certainly wouldn't. I wouldn't charge money to do this build for somebody. And if I sell this keyboard, I will almost certainly desolder it before selling because I wouldn't. Unless somebody's just curious about Greetech Blacks, I could. I have so many Greetech Blacks. I guess it wouldn't be any skin off my back to just throw them in. Um, oh, there's the one I did before. <laughs> this one's on loop though. Leave this off to the side. Sometimes I like to put an unlooped key somewhere on the board. Not on escape, because I use it too often. Um, to the tilde. I'd like to remember where we came from here. So that I will probably forget is unlooped but filmed. So, yeah. I have a, I have a, I have a few boards like that where I have like a, just like a weird switch on the escape or on the tilde or something like that. So a couple of lessons learned, you know, as I'm, as I'm doing this, I can recap some of the things we learned, which is that uh, shake lubing with grease, even a thin grease like 3203, which to be fair, I might have thrown off the ratio a little bit. It's going to be a little thicker than it's probably meant to be, but that's fine. It's still thinner than 3204, for example. Um, although maybe it has less oil in it, but whatever. Um, shake lubing, it doesn't seem to fully cover all the crevices all the time, but that might be okay. We'll see if that's okay. That's one lesson learned. Another lesson learned is that Greetech has like, well, that one's very smooth. It might be that I just didn't shake them enough. So this could be a really inconsistent feeling keyboard. Oh God. Yeah, the other lesson is that Greetech blacks and my guess is reds and these are these are like old stock these are i guarantee you these are old stock i don't know if they make them anymore at all or they've retooled or what um but these have like this very like high friction swoosh kind of feel inside and the shake lubing with 3203 has done little to nothing to alleviate that um so i i and like I said before, you'd have to cherry pick these. That's definitely seeming to be the case. And I'm almost wondering if the failure rate would be higher than 50%. This is like, I've never uh, harvested Vince myself, but I've heard that harvesting vintage MX switches could be quite a crapshoot. And um, it might be the, that same way with these uh, Greetech Blacks, at least these old opaque tops from Taobao is that uh, you might have to buy a lot. I mean, I have a bag of several hundred of them. If I actually want to get one good build out of it, like a, like a really good build out of them, I have no idea how many I'm going to have to actually test um, and how many good ones I'll actually get at the end of the day. Uh, so I would hold off on recommending these categorically. And for 15 cents a switch plus shipping from China, um, I don't know what the deal with the Gateron leaf nowadays is, but apparently the leaf just falls out, which uh, shouldn't matter during usage, but during the build, that sounds incredibly annoying, given how delicate leafs are. Um, so I, I don't know. So find some old stock Gaterons somewhere. You can actually get old stock Gaterons on Taobao for that matter. But, uh, you know, compared to any other um, stock linear. I don't know, I mean, if you're gonna be cherry picking switches, certainly cheaper than Vince, cheaper than Retool MX, slightly cheaper than Gateron. Um, you don't have to cherry pick Gaterons, but the leaves fall out, so you know, pick your poison, right? I have actually, I will say, I've done some experimenting with swaps with Greetex, and they don't work at all. The dimensions are completely off. Um, the, Something is just too big or too small. Nothing, nothing works right. Um, so sad to say that these sliders, as smooth as they seem to be, don't haven't really worked with most other housings I've tried. 
And likewise, most sliders don't work with these housings, um, which is kind of a shame because I wanted to use black tops, like the nice, you know, clacky black tops for something. And I wanted these sliders seem very smooth and I wanted to use them for something. Um, well, I think I tried swapping them with Gateron parts and I, I was told that they were made in the same factory, but evidently not from the same molds because they uh, certainly are not compatible. They're not parts compatible. Um, and normally MX style stuff is like sort of parts compatible. These are very much not at all parts compatible, which is again a real bummer. Um, I think, you know, I wanted to swap Greetech Browns with stuff. Interestingly, the Greetech Browns, I know it's the leaf, that swooshy feeling with the Greetechs. By the way, springs, if they're ever stuck together, do not pull them apart. I know you probably in chat, you know this, but anyone else watching, you're going to want to twist them apart and it's really hard to see because my camera is just has a fixed focus right now twist you saw it twist them apart uh the reason i i'm pretty convinced it's the leaf making the swishy noise is because the gritech browns don't have that swoosh and they just have a bump instead um so and the, the bump actually feels kind of harsh it's not a strong bump but it feels a little harsh which would explain if there's a high friction leaf with no with little to no factory lube on it. Um, that's an ASMR thing, right? Um, that uh, that would that would lead to a harsh bump like that. That's very much like uh, reminded me of a um, pre retool. Oh no, a pre retool MX Brown has this like very scratchy bump. And I, again, I think the pre retool MX has a similar problem where the the contact with the leaf is a is an especially scratchy point. Um, between the leaf bend to help with the vibrations, yeah, I know uh, there's a, um, a few other people who who recommend that. I know uh, Mikey Box, aka Walker Stop, aka Walker, um, has on the back of the leaf will stick a will do a glob of thick lube there. Um, I think IP will do that. Um, maybe you, I don't know if you're in the top clack discord or something, maybe you've talked about it as well. I don't know if you had the original idea for all I know. Um, but I've heard that done. I tried it. I did notice a difference on a few switches. I'm just, that's, it's during normal typing usage when I'm in an office, um, I notice it, but not that much, you know, maybe I'll have headphones on or, um, Maybe you know there will be people talking around me, or there's an air conditioning system running. Um, it's very rare that I'm just in a room silently typing, and in those cases, it doesn't really bother me that much. Uh, my tolerance to annoying sounds is probably higher than your typical serious annoying custom keyboard nerd. Um, it's probably lower tolerance than like your average person who doesn't know anything about keyboards, but it's certainly a higher tolerance to annoying sounds than your typical uh, custom keyboard guy. Because uh, it's, you know, for, if it feels good, I don't really care if it's a little annoying sounding. You can feel a chatter. Oh, you're, you're extremely sensitive then. That's, um, now that you've pointed it out, I'll probably try some like Zelios or something, and I'll immediately notice it. Um, but I'll feel I'll feel for that because uh, you know, not that not that I need an extra step in my builds, but if I really want to do like a serious premium build, like I've got some very high end, uh, not very high end, but some real actual like you know, small quantity group buy custom stuff coming, and uh, for those I might want to actually put you know, a solid weekend of work into one of them, at least. Uh, and for those, I don't mind, you know, if I, it takes me five minutes to switch with the, uh, you know, looping the back of the leaf and uh, triple checking perfection cover coverage of the slider. Ooh, we found an unlubed one. Mm, let's grab a brush, get some of the lube on the inside of the... It's not gonna work at all. There's nowhere near enough lube on the inside of that. All right, I guess we're brush lubing one switch. 
that's actually good. We'll have one brush lubed switch to see how it compares to the uh, to shake lubed. Yes, I have tried creams. And uh, I got the first production batch. So I didn't get, I was not one of like the beta testers, but I bought them when they first went on sale. And I, the stick slip killed me. I hated it so much. Um, and in particular, I actually noticed it. I didn't even really notice it until I had um, lubed the switch with 3204 and then I built it. And then like after a couple days, I really noticed intense stick slip if I went slowly and I hated it so much. Um, I disassembled it. I even, t and I took the switches apart. I took the sliders and I, I took the housings and I separated them. The only thing that seemed to fix the stick slip, yeah, I don't know if they shed lube or there's just some chemical interaction, um, but uh, it, oh my God, it, it, it drove me nuts. I hated it so much. And um, the only thing that seemed to fix it was dry lube. That's why I bought the PTFE. I did a isopropyl alcohol solution. And uh, so this is a, it's still swishy, even after brush lubing. Hear that? And I just brush lubed that. The sound is gonna be different. Let me put, I like to put my two weird switches in the top right corner, that's a normal switch. Let's take that guy out. Put the normal switch somewhere normal. Forget about it. So we've got a filmed unlube switch and we've got a brush lube switch in the top right corner. We'll be able to hear the sound difference. Here's a uh, filmed and unlubed. Here's a uh, shake lubed unfilmed. It's definitely quieter, but you hear that swoosh still. And now here's a brush lubed unfilmed. It's, um, I can feel that the housing is definitely a little smoother against the housing for sure. The swoosh is there. That doesn't go away with lube. That's there to stay. And you can feel the swoosh. It's extra friction. You can feel it. It's very annoying. I can't recommend these, sadly. I've got to really aggressively cherry pick them. Disappointed with them. Yeah, exactly. So Tefram, what I ended up doing with them is I took the sliders and I put them in um, Gateron, uh, Gateron linear housings, Fay housings with milky tops. And I uh, know that's not true. I actually got cherry tops and put them on the milky, whatever. I used the milky tops or something else. And then I took, so I took um, the 3204 loop sliders and I just reapplied 3204. And then I put them into the uh, Gateron milky housings, milky top housings. And then I took the Gateron sliders. I dry lubed those with uh, isopropyl and PTFE powder. And I put those back into the cream housings. And those are... They're very different, um, but I feel like I've finally got my money's worth out of those switches. So I really, I people are like going crazy over Nolives and creams and they're lubing them with 205G0. I'm like, how, do you people not have filling in your fingers? Like, I don't, I don't know how anybody enjoyed typing on that at all. It was terrible for me. Maybe they're better in the later production batches. Maybe the stick slip is completely gone. Um, but it seems to be non-controversial now, whereas it was incredibly controversial when, in my opinion, with good reason. Uh, you know, several months ago. Um, so I don't know, maybe they've improved the plastic formula or something. I guess I could buy more and find out, but I don't really want to spend 50 cents on more switches that I'm going to be unimpressed with when there are so many good switches out there. We've got those thick thock marshmallows, which may or may not be recolored Gaterons, but are probably still good. Um, you know. So I don't know what to think about that. But yeah, dry lubing them, they felt great. It took, it took a while for the dry lube to break in. Um... They feel nice to type on. Yeah, people go crazy for the the, the cream springs too. Um, I think I put sprit springs in mine as well, actually. But the kale springs I normally don't like. They're very pingy and they're very resonant, and you can feel the pinging. Uh, that is that is a spring that I definitely have noticed a feeling with. Um, but apparently the cream springs are good, better than the usual kale fare, which I haven't tried them. I've only ever spring swapped. Some of the batch are worse with the leathery and the sticking. Yeah. 
That definitely, yeah. Dry lubing seems to be the only thing that fixes it. And I do, I do like the cream sound. It has this like really interesting uh, woody sound to it. And uh, I, I had them in the QXP, which with a brass plate, which again I will say is a very like woody sounding keyboard. And together it was like, oh my god, it was the most sublime sound, like marbles dropping on a wood floor. And uh, with some like fairly light springs, like 58 gram springs, something like that. I don't know. It was 60 gram springs, I think, 62 gram. It was, oh man, the sound was incredible. I could not stand the feel, but the sound was just so nice. Um, and right now I have a carbon fiber plate in my QXP, and I have been ranting on Discord recently about how I think carbon fiber is really overrated. Um, and I think uh, carbon fiber is probably good in some cases. I have not tried carbon fiber top mount in an aluminum board. I tried carbon fiber top mount in the series. I don't like how it sounds. I don't like how it feels. Uh, I actually kind of like how it feels, but I don't like how it sounds. Uh, it's too much of the same. It's like, I, I described it as like wearing two shades of yellow. Carbon fiber on plastic is like wearing like a bright yellow and like a mustardy yellow in the same outfit. It's just gonna clash. It's like too much of the same thing, but not quite the same thing. Whereas carbon fiber on the QXP, because um, the QXP is such like a deep resonant woody sounding keyboard and the carbon fiber is this like hollow thin clacky thing. The carbon fiber like sucks the life out of the QXP. Aluminum or uh, brass will do much, much better sound wise in the QXP. Although I have a, a polycarbonate plate in my other QXP and that is really nice. Um, so don't do carbon fiber in a QXP. Um, and yeah, the rich sound, it's like a, oh man, I gotta, I gotta take apart the um, carbon fiber build. I think it's the sliders actually. The housings help, but the sliders are, are really, really nice. The cream sliders are really nice. But I gotta take that one apart. Either do aluminum or brass again with that. Um, Cause oh, it was just like, I loved, I just, I just would walk by it and just like type on it. Cause it was just so nice. I think I did too many of these. I don't know how to count from a child. Get close to the end here. Let's see if I can eyeball and nail the uh, win key <laughs> switch positions. I think it's so, did that one fold over? No. Thorough tester. Yeah, yeah, I used to do that a lot. Um, I have such a huge backlog of like builds and like things I wanna try that I've kind of stopped doing that. Um, one day I'll do more. And again, I'm planning on, you know, trying to ramp up making some actual content. I will very unlikely be streaming at this hour on a typical basis. Um, this is an unusual week for me. In terms of I'm working from home a lot, I'll be traveling a lot, so my schedule is gonna be totally whack. Um, and I normally pass out at 10.30, but I had coffee in the afternoon. So only the only thing that will stand between me and sleep is caffeine. <laughs> I'm very sensitive to it, so, oh, let's see. There's gonna be probably, all right, all right, I'll measure this out. Novice builders, just use the keycaps for measuring. Don't pretend like you can eyeball it. You will get it wrong. You will have to desolder switches. It will waste your time. Don't do that. Just Throw a cap on there, you don't have to throw it on all the way. Just make sure that they are in the right spot. Okay, so these are all pushed over to the left. I guess I'll just build, build the rest of them. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six more. stuff in my lap. I have no room over here. One. Two.
also counted wrong. <laughs> I think I started it two or I, I counted one and then I counted two as the same switch. I don't know. I only did five. Or I only did four. I was would have only done five. Kathy's wearing off. Gotta finish this build. Yeah. Another lesson learned. This this shake looping is inconsistent. Um you really need to shake it for a long time, I think. I didn't shake it for nearly long enough. I think last time I did a build like this I really let it rip for like a couple minutes of shaking. And this time I did, you know, just a couple seconds. Not a couple minutes, but many more seconds than I did. And uh, I I will say that it just visually, you can see, it does not have even coverage. So, you know, another lesson learned. Let me make the mistakes for you. Okay, so it looks like left. left and then middle and then left and then left I would guess yeah I'm glad you rated too I'm glad you got to find out I think there's actually several people still watching from um I don't know maybe they've all fallen asleep and left it running but um there's technically several people still in here from there and yeah, so my way probably won't be as, I mean, you'll see on my video, I'm very much just kind of going at it. Whereas, you know, you, you can spend as, again, a very Bob Ross thing is you can spend as long or as little time on it as you want. You can, you know, you can always take your finger and wipe off the, um, wipe off the excess lube. By the way, um, for anyone in case you have a really good memory, it's inside, outside, outside, outside. So the three on the on the wind keyless 6.25, these three on the outside go to the right. <laughs> and then the one on the inside goes to the left. I don't know if it's the same on all PCBs. It seems like it should be mostly the same on most PCBs. This one's actually in the middle. I don't know. This probably isn't transferable knowledge to any other PCB which would mean this one's on the inside, right, because if this was on the outside, that would be 1.5, because this is the same position as the 7U. And which would mean that if it was on the inside, this would be pushed over to the left, but this should be over to the right, because this is pushed over to the right. Otherwise that position would be useless. We will trust but verify, so we will check after I'm done. And then the 1.5 would put it in here, so that must be on the other one. Just using playing some mental minesweeper here, and nope, I got that wrong. Is that support a one U next to the. I don't know what layout that supports, which means I got that one wrong. But this one on the left is right. Really making sure these are flush. Nothing's more embarrassing than posting a picture of your hard work on Reddit and someone goes, your modifier keys aren't straight. <laughs> really send you home crying to mom. Oh my god, downvoted on our custom keyboards. Well, were your switches straight, honey? No. Well, you should have thought better about posting next time. We're good. Ready to go. We're ready to let it rip. I have a few more. I'm just gonna um, uh, six more. I guess I'll just assemble them to save space on my desk, so I don't have to like work with a bunch of uh, work around a bunch of bowls with a 600 degree chunk of metal in my hand. <laughs> Memory is funny on what you can remember. Sequences are not one of them. Interesting. Have you ever been, um, you know, since you have a, a, you know, a very specific diagnosed, uh, I guess, learn, learning disability, learning disorder, I don't know what the correct, sort of politically correct way to address that is, but um, have you ever been, like, studied? Has anyone ever, like, gotten in a room and, like, made you do a bunch of memory challenges and seen, like, what you could and could not, uh, you know, 
handle compared to like an average person. I feel like that would be really fascinating um, to get a, a window into the mind. Because I definitely, I, I probably, if I was in school today, I'd probably be diagnosed with some kind of learning disability. Not like a serious one, but I have weirdly good aptitude for certain tasks, like above average aptitude for certain tasks. And for other tasks, I have remarkably below aptitude. <laughs> um, and and I, I, I it, it's a little weird. It feels a little lopsided intellectually sometimes. Um, somehow I managed to have I'm short of spring, and I'm up at top housing. What? I must have dropped something. <laughs> okay. I have an extra slider and an extra top housing, which means I'm missing a bottom housing and I'm missing a spring. I don't know, man. Both these sequences kind of, yeah, have been studied. I have holes in my memory as they described it. Interesting. Really interesting. All right, well, I've got some spare parts <laughs> offering to the keyboard gods, I guess. Um, I don't know, I'm just sticking everything on the floor because I'm a savage. Some extra switches. Those would be fun to never use. Brush, use the lube. Gonna use the soldering iron. Sponge is still wet from last night, that's good. Still soaking wet, actually. All right, let's check our work. Um, we wanna make sure that all the switches are flush with the PCB and with the plate. And I just snapped one in, as you probably might have heard. These pins are a little tight in this PCB, so you definitely, definitely wanna go over and check. Again, nothing is more embarrassing than having misaligned switches, and it will talk about things that will drive you crazy. That will uh, drives me nuts. If I see it, I'm at work and I'm like staring at a misaligned switch all day, and I can't wait to rush home and take apart my keyboard and fix it. Oh man, that's always a trip. And then you can stab yourself in the finger, get some lead in your veins. I have to learn different methods to memorizing than what most people do. For math, I had to find patterns that made sense to me and that I could easily replicate. You know, that actually sounds very um, familiar to how I do math. And I nominally do math every day at work. I um, do a lot of statistical stuff. And I've, I think if there's anything I've struggled with the most, it's with um, what you might call computational reasoning, where like I have to reason about number like fitting numbers together um, I do much better with shapes I like to draw pictures in my head if I can't visualize it in pictographic form I, I'm kind of useless but I also have this unusual ability to visualize things um, that's why I did I, so I did really well in topology for example and I did really bad in, algebra, in uh, abstract algebra make a pattern for the base table then right there. oh that's that's way more um uh, way more visual than I would ever get, but that's um, that's fascinating. Ooh, let me know if the sound is bad, okay? Let me know if that sound is annoying. Cannot visualize numbers in your head. Yeah, no. Now I'm curious. Um, because I, I mean, I certainly don't, I haven't been diagnosed with anything, so presumably I must have some ability to do that, but that always seemed like such an alien thing. Visualizing numbers. Do I visualize? I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Where am I starting today? I always start in the top right. I start at the bottom right. These pads have seen some shit. Let me tell you what. These have been desoldered at least once. Oh, dear. Oh, it's not taking. Oh, it is. 
Okay. Yeah, these pads have been used. This is this might be this keyboard's last rodeo. At least this PCB. That switch is not seated correctly. The CIY switch puller. This tool is amazing. I love it. So this um pin can't see anything, damn it. The, the pin's folded flat against the bottom of the, 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 the bottom of the switch. You gotta unfold it. Sometimes I actually use the flush cutters. <laughs> throw throw them myself. Sometimes I use the flush cutters to get up in there under the bent pin and unbend it. Goes all the way on the left, which we concluded earlier. For anyone curious, I saw it at one thirty at six thirty five Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius. I um also do not have any kind of formal training in electrical anything whatsoever. I took um one physics class, uh AP physics for the Americans, if you know what that is. And I took a loudspeaker design class in college and I didn't do very well. I had uh, some kind of short which led to a um Accidentally had a high pass filter where it wasn't supposed to be. So my loudspeaker didn't work very well. Sound profile wasn't right. But I know how to solder enough to put keyboards together. on camera? No, of course it's not on camera. Why would it be on camera? Yeah, these pads are real chunked up. You're not going to be able, I'm not even going to bother showing it on, on camera because you're not even going to see it, but some of these are really like chunks taken out of them. I, should, I probably should have tested all of them. I didn't. I haven't tested some of them. If I have to jump a few of them, I have to jump a few of them so it goes. But yeah, I actually don't know if this PCB, now that I'm looking at it and working with it, I don't know oh, that that pad's the pins folded over as well. I don't know if this PCB um, is really up for another rebuild after this. So, you know, not that... I'm terribly attached to a, you know, an old boot mapper PCB. Given that it's a standard 60% here, I'm gonna use the flush cutters to pry the pin off of the bottom housing and then straighten it out a little bit. But it is sad to lose a PCB. It makes unbuilding very easy when you don't care about the PCB. Oh, hey, Glacier, look at that. Um, I don't know if I can recap some things. Keywords what got me into soldering and electronics. Yeah, it got me back into it in a big way. Um, I sort of like thought I cared about it and then I didn't care about it for a while. And then yeah, keyboards got me into soldering electronics. It got me into actually like hardware programming in a way that I never would have otherwise. Not that I'm really a hardware programmer, but I can, I can work my way around C code better than I ever could. Um, I have a basic sense of just how this stuff works now, you know, at a hardware level. I, like, know what ARM means and what, uh, you know, different... I know what a microprocessor really is, you know, I have a better sense of that, what a bootloader is. I just, I've learned so much stuff I never would have touched otherwise. It's great. It's, it's like, really appeals to my, like, DIY sensibility. It really helped me tap into a um, uh, set of interests and, not necessarily skills, but you know, miscellaneous knowledge, I sort of had beginner knowledge I had brewing that I'm actually have been able to capitalize on. Glacier to recap, um, the, the, the Gritex swoosh, regardless of how you lube them, it seems. Um, also, it seems that shake lubing with 3203, you really need to shake it for a while and probably use more than you normally would. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't get into all the crevices, and it does seem to make a difference when you compare it to brush lubing. 
Um, films, I really don't know if they're going to make a difference at all. I didn't end up using them. I don't know how much of the build you saw. But uh, those are just some takeaways. But you know what? Builds also can surprise. You know, maybe I'm like really down on this build and I haven't even finished it yet. Maybe I'm really going to like typing on it. Or maybe it's going to be ass and I'm never going to type on it again. Never know. Yeah, Linux definitely helps. Um, if you're not in uh, the QMK uh, development Discord, you might benefit from at least lurking there and seeing the kinds of things they talk about. You can learn concepts just by listening to like people like Drashna Yankar debate over in Scully Dazed. Uh, debate over the design of this or that feature. There's other, you know, keyboard known keyboard designer names in there who have some kind of stake in the, you know, future of QMK. Um, you certainly learn things. You, you know, if nothing else, you learn about how your keyboard works. Now I'm into right to repair, software freedom, that kind of thing. Dev environments, Git. Yeah, you know, I I tried to weigh in. I have some strong opinions on. UX for like bridging the gap between technical people and non-technical people. Um, but I, I tried to make some contributions, but I really was in over my head with the C code stuff. I'm, I'm learning it, but again, there's just so much that's under documented in so many parts of the software world. Um, and it, I don't know, a lot of this hardware stuff, you like really need a book. You gotta like learn from a book or you have to like have enough experience to like know how to read the spec sheet and then like read the code and recognize all the idioms whereas you know I'm, I'm coming from a higher level language like Python where um, there's idioms you have to memorize too but uh, it's just uh, it's a familiarity bias who am I talking who am I kidding but uh, yeah the QMK stuff uh, I just didn't have the time to like really invest in like learning what the the, the way it is done currently enough to feel like I was able to make a meaningful contribution to making it better. I'm a user, um, and I like to think that I have more aptitude than the average user, but like not really. I think I'm probably about average because there's probably a long tail of very experienced users and a huge amount of very inexperienced users. So if, I, if I'm not average, I'm probably median. Um, and that's okay, but that means I'm Strong opinions alone do not make you qualified to contribute. You know, I'm pretty empathetic. I think I've, I've been told I'm a decent educator. I can explain things well. Um, but do I have time to rewrite chunks of the QMK documentation? No. You know, I have time to complain about it. Do I have time to rewrite it? No. And, you know, I can... This is sort of typical for software. Like, yeah, I'll give my opinion. But if they've heard the opinion before, I really just need to shut up. Because I know about it. And they're volunteers. I'm not going to hassle them. I'm paying for software, that's another story. I'll complain at them all I want. Now, until we can find an enterprise vendor to, to actually use QMK, that would be sick. If, um, uh, oh God, if uh, we had like uh, uh, some kind of OEM keyboard vendor actually used QMK in their uh, product and started paying for like you know, like, hired somebody like Drashna or Yankar to, like, work on QMK full-time, like, the way that you have, like, Linux devs working for IBM. That will be pretty sweet. I don't think it'll ever happen. The economics don't make any sense. Um, but it be kind of a fun dream. Just a big win for software freedom. Hardware freedom. Open firmware. I think even down to the bootloaders sometimes, um... QMK, uh, QMK has its own fork of the DFU bootloader, and that, I believe, is fully open source, so I think you can have a completely free keyboard, top to bottom, talking to your very unfree computer, of course. Drashner is getting paid. Oh, is that is that paid out of donations or is that a uh, paid by um OLKB? 
Is he an OLKB employee? That's pretty cool. Imagine your job, your full-time job being keyboards. And not like as a, as a, oh, I missed that one as a, alright, time to bust out the sucker. Jeez, I also need a lead bowl. I hate this part. I hate having a bowl of toxic dust in my apartment. This is the uh, Solda Pult. It's got like a nylon or PTFE tip. It's heat resistant. It's huge. You have to like smash it against the table or use two hands to reset it, but it will suck anything. So you, you heat the pad, melt the solder, and then just suck it right up. You gotta eject the solder into your poison bowl. Make sure it's all out of there. You're good to go. And now I have to take that switch out and straighten out the pin. Okay, note to self, don't lube the inside of the plunger because I don't want to suck the pad off my PCB. <laughs> That's super cool, though. That's really cool. It's probably better for some kind of, like, industrial uses, right? Where you have these, like, probably good for, um, like, lead-free soldering or something like that. People have said to lube your engineer solder sucker, too. I haven't done that. Um, maybe that'll help deal with the engineer because the engineer gets clogged so easily but I think that's more just the shape of the nozzle the design of the nozzle more than anything because it sucks good it sucks real good but it doesn't um it gets stuck ejecting stuff you have to clear it like every joint oh boy this this pad is chunked up man this 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 poor pcb has seen some shit I should have tested the whole thing. I only tested a few pads. I was like, oh, it's fine. Worked when I was, it worked when the, for the previous owner. Didn't consider the previous owner may well have brutalized it in disassembly before selling it to me. God, there's so much missing pad. Still prefer the cheap blue pump. Well, that wasn't cheap. The, so I got the name brand Solda Pult, and I think that's actually there's a there's a Hako one as well. Uh, there is a, there are cheap knockoffs, and I knew you were talking about it, but that one wasn't cheap. That was like twenty bucks. It was the same price as the Engineer, I think. <laughs> Although the difference is that the Engineer, I keep having to buy those uh, silicone mm -hmm. tubes, and the Solda Pult, I have not had to replace any parts. For context, for anyone who doesn't know what the heck I'm talking about, this is the Engineer SSO2 solder sucker. Mine's actually clogged right now completely. I have to actually drill out the tube because there is um, a solder actually caked inside there from a really egregious build that also broke my electric solder sucker, the vacuum, and I had to order a replacement handle. Literally put me out $50 by somebody using cheap solder and me being too stupid to add extra flux add extra flux when you're desoldering a whole keyboard or add fresh solder like um, Rumai said but just add flux anyway the two dollar one's not as nice as the genuine one my question though is if you lube it for you guys don't you then have like lead encrusted grease all over everything and you just have like permanent lead dust embedded in grease all over the inside of it and you can never like like at least with mine unlubed I can just unscrew it and then I just dump all the lead dust in the trash in a bag hold my breath open the window probably still gonna get brain damage let's be real but then don't you just have like permanent like lead sludge yes it's very dirty okay well, actually, maybe that's good, because maybe that mitigates dust buildup, and so it doesn't, like, spray lead at you when you open it. So maybe that's actually a good thing.
We're almost done, kids. You know, again, here's like a nice custom keyboard thing. If you have a fresh PCB and it's like your keyboard and you really want to take care of it, one thing you should do is uh, make sure the pins are nice and straight before you solder the joint. That will just make it that much easier to desolder. Those are flush, right? Yeah, they're flush. You can actually look down. Like I was actually, I, I didn't show you. I keep forgetting to show the camera. I was actually looking down the line to make sure it was flush. Use gloves and a towel to clean it. Helps keep it working at peak performance. Supply powder for alcohol and flux. Yeah, exactly. Desoldering bent pins is a pain in the ass. Now again, for consumer stuff, if you're using consumer grade, I'm using um, a Kester, uh, the 6337, I think it's, it's, it's considered eutectic, which I think um, is like a fancy chemistry term for meaning there, there's like a very, some kind of specially, especially rapid transition from liquid to solid. So it doesn't form this like chunky like intermediate transition phase which just makes it very nice to work with i don't i don't haven't spent too much time with different so, um, solder wires but it's it's very pleasant to use um so you know with this kind of solder desoldering is pretty easy across the board but if you have bent pins um it just makes it that hard much harder to get a clean suction with the solder sucker Taking around this USB port's always annoying. And yeah, guys, don't judge me either because I don't even know where my uh, isopropyl alcohol is right now. I'm getting like a new dispenser bottle, the kind that you press down on. Um, and I got some Kim wipes. I'm going to pick up the hardware store. And uh, But for right now, I am way too lazy to clean this PCB. It's got so much like flux caked on it anyway. Who cares? A little more. Again, it might be its last rodeo for all I know. But again, nice custom keyboard. You want to take care of your PCB, you should clean it. You should make sure the pins are straight. All that stuff. I'm told. I've, I've been told different things. It's bad. It's not bad. It'll corrode it. It won't corrode it. I don't know. Anyway, we're done. Um, I assume I'm gonna have to redo a couple joints, so I'm gonna just leave this hot. Um, I gotta take a. Take apart my existing uh, one. Take apart the plug. Okay. So I had an issue with a fast chip alloy. Is that a kind of flux? Oh, boot mapper heads. I don't know if you two are boot mapper guys. Um, I probably need a Windows driver. But uh, error connecting to PS2 AV RGB device. So I can't boot mapper this. So I'm going to use whatever the default layout is. Um, but uh, we're going to quickly test this. Makes desoldering much easier when the components don't want to come off. Huh. Oh, I know what that stuff is. That's like a super low melting point solder, right? And you alloys into the, um, there, this comes in little pellets, right? I saw that on like a, on a video. Um, apparently it's very expensive. Uh, and I know I think it's mostly for, you know, integrated circuits, right? But uh, that's good to know. Oh God, this layout's horrible. I really need to hit boot mapper. I need to figure out how to use boot mapper. But amazingly, so far, every key is working. Wow, is every key working? Every single key works. That's amazing. Wow, good for me. Oh, let's see if I can get a function key going. 
F keys. Yes. It works. Okay, every single key I soldered works. That's amazing. Good job, me. Okay, so the layout is messed up. I don't know what's up with Boot Mapper. I probably need to install a driver. Uh, absolute worst case scenario is I'll put QMK on it. It is nice when that happens, right? Um, but uh, I'm going to throw it back in the case and put some caps on it. I just need to wash my hands and get the lead off. Be right back. All right, almost done, almost to the finish line. It's about, uh, what are we looking at? Three and a half hours, not too bad, not too bad. Whole keyboard, including lube, in three and a half hours. That's acceptable, very acceptable. Next time I'll use different lube, well, different switches. I won't, I won't do these switches with this method again, that's for sure, definitely will not. Um, I cannot advocate, there's just some dust in here, again, vintage Korean dust. I'm from North America, so that's very exotic to me. I've only ever been to Korea in the airport. I got noodles, they were really good, but I can't say I've been to Korea. Um, oh, Glacier, I, it's, you probably missed the beginning. I was pointing out there's like machining marks in here and it's kind of actually a cool look. Um, but uh, I don't even know how else I'm just rambling at this point, I'm tired. screwdriver kit. It's not a Rama tray, but it's magnetic, even though these aren't magnetic, but it makes it cool. It sounds really cool in the microphone. That's a good sample for my uh, ambient noise project that I'm not... I, I, I've actually... The part of the reason I got this recorder originally was so I can do field recording. That's actually kind of a really cool sound. I could, use, I could do something with that. I haven't really made music in a long time like that. I haven't really ever recorded anything officially, but it'd be nice to make music eventually once I get the studio more set up with the studio. I have no idea how this is gonna feel and sound. I've never typed on one of these in my life. I've never I've never read a review of one. I've never seen a typing test of one. Completely sight unseen. I posted want to buy B face case. I got three different variants, I guess from over the ages. You know, they made different kinds over time. This is one of them. It's got cone feet. Tim Hacker album screws. <laughs> yeah, right, it's like a very um, kind of ambient thing where you name the track after what it is. It's very, uh, what do you name it? It's a very modern art thing in general. I would consider ambient music and also the modern art. It would just be like screws. Iron girder number three with special sauce. That'd be a fun um, food truck where you name all your um, dishes after like modern art pieces. So you've got like the Iron girder with swing burger, and you've got like your uh, grilled cheese might be, um, I don't know, uh, untitled in clay number seven. Sounds very expensive. It's probably the best damn grilled cheese you've ever had though. 
you guys are probably in, in uh, yeah, <laughs> zero, 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 one, zero, 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 two. Honestly, if there's one thing that I don't love, that I don't totally love about like modern art, it's actually the naming. It's it's how gratuitously they go with just untitled. And there's probably a purpose to it where it's like, well, the piece is meant to speak for itself. You're not supposed to be corrupted by the title, but like it definitely helps guide the viewer or reader or listener's attention in one place or another. So it's like I don't know, I don't know what to look at. I'm not I'm not an experienced art connoisseur. I don't know what I'm looking at. Guide me. But I've also stopped completely reading the blog, the blurbs. There's a there's a if you go to an art museum and they have stuff from the you know the 1800s, 1900s. There's a point around somewhere between 1940 and 1960 where you need to stop reading the blurbs. Turn my volume back up. Actually, I'm probably very quiet right now. Yeah, if you go to an art museum, you have to stop reading the blurbs after a certain point in time because they become increasingly meaningless. Um, you know, the ones from the 19th century, they're all about the history of the artist, and this was controversial in the French Academy at the time, and then they become increasingly, like, less historical, less contextual, and more just, like, praising the piece. It's like, dude, I'm looking at it. I don't want to know what, like, this one critic thought about this colors. I want to know, like, the context of this piece and, like, the milieu and the art history. Ryoji Ikeda, that guy comes up in my uh, YouTube uh, algorithm recommendations a lot. Crazy, but in a good way, sounds good. I'll have to check him out. I just haven't actually listened to it. Hey kids, we got a keyboard. We got a finished keyboard. I wish a boot mapper was working so that I could change the colors because I'm about to put Hyperfuse. We're going full vintage. Hyperfuse. GMK have reviews though. I don't know if essay have I could do essay penumbra. That's too that's too much. That's gratuitous. It's also already on another keyboard. What else do I have that's like vintage? Not vintage, but like vintage custom. Hyperfuse is such a classic. I I don't have hacked by geeks, I wish. I've never been hacked by geeks. Not that OG. I do, however, have three run. I only have one of the three run kits. I wish I had three run, but it's too expensive. $145 for 60%, no way. I think I have some Hyperfuse Artisan somewhere, but I can't remember. I don't know where it would be. Yeah, if I had like DCS cream cheese and green or something, right? I actually have DCS Midnight. I don't know where it is. I don't want to go digging around for it, but DCS Midnight seems apt. Um, I have DCS Percent on another board, but that's like very 2017. DCS, I don't, so I don't have the original. I have the reissue, the Signature Plastics reissue. But uh, yeah, DCS Midnight would be very 20. So Hyperfuse is what, 2014? Right, twenty the first hyperfuse sets with DSA hyperfuse like 2014, 2015. This is um ancient. <laughs> Look at this bag. It's Control Alt logo on it. Um, let's see if there's a year on this. Twenty sixteen. That's apt. Actually, that's apt for this keyboard. Twenty sixteen is is uh <laughs> this is so that would mean this is. OG GMK Hyper. This is the first GMK Hyperfuse round one. Yeah, this this is the best Hyperfuse in my opinion. Oh shit. Someone left an artisan in here. Oh my god. I don't even remember who sold this to me. I don't even know what artisan is. I don't even know what sculpt this is. Is this Faber Tooth? Is that what this is? It certainly looks well used. It's like yellowed. It's been in the sun for a long time. Who makes this? I think this was like when I was first getting in the hobby, I would see these on neck market and I was like, ooh, wow. It's just sitting in here. I haven't even opened this bag. Okay, I'll have to look that up. It kind of matches. It's so yellowed, it matches. 
<laughs> Maybe it matched more. But even on the bottom, it's yellowed. Maybe they just used yellowy resin. I don't know. It feels like it's weird. Don't do hyperfuse origins for white on black. Don't do that. Don't do that. Wait for it to be on drop.com again. Don't do that. Or get HSA white on black. Don't, don't do that. You will regret that. PayPal regardless. How much PayPal? That's You're trading sentimental value and a piece of history for... Uh, maybe it has no sentimental value for you. Hey, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's, it's not, I'm not using 7 here today. I'm using 6.25 here today. No rattle, some rattle. Yeah, that's true, that's true. It's still hyperfused. It's hyperfused. <laughs> right. Oh god, you can hear the swishing. You can feel the swishing. Oh dear. Wow, this is in great shape. It's barely used. Look at this. It still has the. It's, you can't see it. It still has the the original rough and texture. On uh, on the numbers, and on the T key, the T is a common key. Somebody barely used this. No, it's been used. Okay, there's a little shine on the T, like not much. This has hardly been used at all. I think I got a deal on this too. I don't even know how much I paid. I don't think I paid that much. Mod colored backslash, go to hell with that. Start a holy war. Teal. Oh, we're doing cyan or purple accents? We're doing cyan because that's what I grabbed first. Sounds all right so far. Sweet, I got a free artisan. I should probably get in touch with the person who sold this to me and uh, see if they want it back. I couldn't tell you who sold this to me, however. Um, I'll probably put out a call on Discord. Hey, if you sold me Hyperfuse. <laughs> I don't, is there a way to search? I think I bought it on Discord. Uh, if there's a way to search through your Discord messages for um, keywords, I don't think there is, but if anyone knows of one, hit me up, because I don't want to stiff somebody of their artisan. Um, if nothing else, I'd like to at least make sure they're fairly compensated for whatever it might be if I'm gonna hang on to it. Oh, Windows keys, the worst. You know what? I'm not. I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna use a shift key and a menu key. I hate Windows keys that much. Actually, I might not have enough bottom row mods. All right, I'll use the Windows keys. I'll live with it. Cat profile, dude. Cat is really interesting. Um, HF one. HF one was the grail for me. It was like. I was first getting the hobby. I was like, I like, I wanted like a like a gherkin, like the thirty percent gherkin with like an SA vomit set. <laughs> I thought that was like, wow, it's so obscure and badass. <laughs> uh, cat is really interesting. It's um, well that stabs a little sluggish. That'll work out over time. Um, yeah, the gherkin, uh, uh, camp. Cam is, um, or cat rather, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's like tall, it's very comfortable to type on, it's just still a little bit tall for me, I think, um, and I think partly because all of our keyboards, I was just talking about this in Discord the other day, or today actually, all of our keyboards are more or less optimized for GMK keycaps, just because that's the standard nowadays. Um, and I guess has been the standard since 2008. Mint really showed the sound on stream. It's close to SAR3. I would say that, but it's PBT. It has this more, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it sounds like PBT, I guess, is the only difference. Um, and it's very, very smooth. It's like alarmingly smooth. It's, it's shockingly smooth for PBT. Uh, like glossy, like signature plastics, ABS glossy. It's unbelievable. It's really unique stuff. I highly recommend at least trying, go to a meetup and try somebody's cam or cat keycaps if possible. 
really impressive, really interesting stuff from Curative. Hopefully they um, have worked out, you know, most or all of the production kinks and are able to start running sets because there's, well, there's a few group buys now that, have, that are in progress. Uh, best of luck to them because it's really... This has barely been used, man. This is an amazing find. I, can't, I would love to know how much I paid for this. I'll have to go back to my PayPal. Um, you don't use any angle essay. So there's, so I think, don't quote me in this, I think Cam is just our three cat. Maybe it's a little shorter, but Cam I think is also very much like a, like a taller DSA. Um, so I think the only cam set on the market right now is Starry Night, which was originally going to be a DSA set. Um, I actually have never used a, uh, SA Ice Cap. I don't know what the PBTSA from Signature Plastics feels like. So I can't comment on that, which is a little weird. I guess nobody has it at meetups anymore. It's kind of a vintage thing. Not vintage, but again, classic, modern classic, you know. Um, oh, I got a control key over there. I'll get the stupid shift key out of here, put a, put a Windows key in a menu key. Oh, that could have stayed. Nice looking. See, I like I like the style of menu key. I don't like it when it's like a two, two of a realistic menu key with like the pointer. I actually really like Starry Night. I liked how it came out. Um, it's a little, some parts of it are a little clashy. Like I think you have to be very choosy about which parts go with which. And uh, I think the the die sub caps, the smaller ones, like the one use, are a little too busy. They actually really pulled off. I was very impressed that they pulled off the that incredibly detailed die sublimation, especially the reverse die sub. But after all that work, I just feel like it doesn't look very good. Uh, it's just too busy to jam on all one U key cap. And the irony is that they got the detail too good. So it looks so busy because they got all the detail perfect. Um, you know, again, live and learn, right? They ran it. I feel bad. I I I hassled them. I I you know I didn't know the vendor. I didn't know what their deal was. Z Frontier had kind of gone ghost on a lot of people. I thought everybody was going to lose their money and Z Frontier was going to turn out to be a scam operation, or it was going to be like a certain vendor. <laughs> who, uh, you know, shipping group buys years later. So I just was, I spooked and I, I got a refund, um, partial refund. But, you know, it worked out for everybody. And I will, in spite of Z Frontier's horrendous communication, I will continue to give Curate of my money, even if I don't give Z Frontier any money for anything else. And I don't know, they were, I assume they were extremely overwhelmed and they were probably stressed out on their end and... You know, on a personal level, I have nothing against them. And it looks like top row alpha colored backslash was not a thing when this key set came out. Here's a question. When did the KMAC Happy come out? I have no idea. Wonder if this set predates that. I doubt it. The KMAC Happy must be like 2012 or something like that. I don't know anything about what Korean customs. Anyway, I don't have a, a backslash key for HHKB layout. And I really don't want to use the numpad key because it's going to look really bad, but I'm going to do it. I, I feel bad putting some guy's artisan on my keyboard or some my artisan. All right, let me get these keycaps away. I don't know why there's two bags. Maybe this came in two bags originally. Oh, I know why it's in two bags, because this bag ripped. The ghosting is the worst. What do you mean by the ghosting? Like, yeah, I think I, um... Oh, oh, the ghosting by the... Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I make decent money. You know, I have a job, and I have white collar in a, in a high high cost of living part of the United States, but I'm not made of money, <laughs> you know? Still have to earn it. And there's other things I could be spending my money on, you know? If you're gonna hold it up for six months, you better tell me what's going on. 2013. That sounds about right. 
again, Koreans literally years ahead of the curve. When did the West, or was it when the Nox Reax 60 came out? It was 2017. Between the KMAC Happy and the Nox Reax 60, how many HHKB layout customs came out? Probably like a few, right? I don't know. Probably not too many. All right, we're getting to the last stretch where I type on a keyboard that's not plugged in. Actually, I could do it plugged in. I told you it plugged in. I want to redo my audio setup a little bit here. Bear with me. Oh, it sounds so scratchy. It feels, so, it feels like it's unlubed. It doesn't feel like I lubed it at all. That's ridiculous. So it's also going to light up red, which is unfortunate because it doesn't match Hyperfuse at all. But again, Boot Mapper is not cooperating with me right now. And I will have to figure out what's up with it another time. Backspace is where tilde goes. Caps and switches are more of a priority in the case of sound and vibration. Yeah, I can see that. That's fair. Very fair. Okay, do I want to use a wrist rest? I should, because this table's too tall for me. I'm gonna use a wrist rest. Normally I use like a bean bag one, but it's too big for this, for my area. And there's a wood one. There's a wood rest rest and hyperfuse. How Reddit is this set up right now? Focus on the caps and switches. Yeah, that's again, the great part about this hobby is you can focus on whatever part you want and it'll work for you. All right, so this is a, um, some version, some variant of the wind keyless uh, B face case. I don't know what generation, I don't know when it was made, I don't know what exactly this particular model was. It is an acrylic tray um, with a bottom mount aluminum plate and no bezel. Um, this, okay, the glacier says this is the bold case. I, I'll take your word for it that this is in fact the bold case. I do have sandwich ones, but this is the bold one. Uh, the sandwich ones will make an appearance on another stream. Um, I should have I should have used the sandwich ones. Oh well. And oh, I for, hang on a minute. I forgot my function key. So this is the bold. This is the wind keyless bold case, evidently. And um, it has Gretech blacks, which were shake lubed uh, poorly, I might add, with. Um, Crytox 3203 from uh, Miller's Stephenson. So this is the U.S. stuff from SwitchMod.net, not the international stuff, which is slightly different, but just as good. I don't know where my function key is. I'm gonna throw a delete key on it because I'm a savage. And we have uh, GMK Hyperfuse Round One. Um, and we have TX keyboard, 55 gram springs. And we have the original B-Face PCB, which is a garbage truck outside. And we have the original B-Face PCB, which is seen better days, but it's okay. We don't need to discriminate here. And here is me sucking it up at 10 fast fingers and my backspace is all wrong because I haven't got boot map or boot mapper working.
a respectable but typo written 109 words a minute. We're going to go modify our keys because we can. Boy, is it a shame about this keyboard because this scratch is ridiculous. This swooshing sound, you can feel it. It's friction. You have to cherry pick these things like crazy. And it's and like I said, it's not like an MX, like a bad retool where it's like feels like there's sand in it. It's smooth. It's just it's not smooth. Good, this is fitting. 2016 Western Community Custom. It's so bad. And a lot of switches, you know, you put the mic too close to it. Here, this is more like, the mic's pretty close. I had it angled down. Let me, let me pull it further back. And what's really funny, God, it's so funny, because this case, these, these first of all, these top housings sound amazing. I mean, you get the little of that crack from the aluminum, but you get a little of that, like, like sort of like rubbery thud from the acrylic. It's a little bit of like, but it looks like somebody melted. <laughs> the previous owner uh, had a run in with the um, soldering iron. I think that's why I got this for cheap because the tilde key was dinked. <laughs> I don't know, maybe this was a, th a freebie. I have to, um, yeah, GMK caps, um, definitely, you know, I guess if this was 2016, you'd have some, like, I don't know, you'd have, like, Philco caps on it or something, right? <laughs> and uh, it would sound a lot worse, but it's a shame because other than the, uh, other than the scratch, I love it. Um, spring weighting is perfect for the angle, and uh, I should, oh, that kills me. Maybe it'll break in, you know? Maybe if I type on this at work for a week, it'll break in. The scratch is so bad that if I take my headphones off, I can hear the scratch typing at normal typing distance, which I have never been able to say for any keyboard ever else. So that's a bummer, but we learned some things. I had fun. I've been live for almost four hours. It is time I go to sleep and try to get some sleep. There it is, guys. Thanks for keeping me company, Glacier and Tefram. Who else is on? Who has survived? I'm sure you guys are all asleep. Rumai, you were an OG. You were the first one here. Chubies, you're not here anymore, but shout out. Thank you for the raid. Um... I actually don't know most of these usernames. Thank you, a couple guys from uh, uh, Anesthetic. You, you're for all I know, you're still watching because I know you're probably at work. Um, anyone else? Thanks for checking me out. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's a little scuffed, but uh, we made it. Have a good night, everybody.